The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. It is savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning's State Fair Specials. Deals on deals on deals that can save you thousands. Visit standardheating.com for all their State Fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 Today is Thursday. Hey, who's ready to have some fun? This is Jesse the Body. You're watching Fish Police. Fish Police is dedicated to the men and women in fish enforcement. Hello. Hi. It's the Body here again, and not on the lakes and rivers today. Instead, I'm at the great Minnesota get-together, the Minnesota State Fair, while no assholes will be busted. All right, let's have some fun at the fair. The body will be reciting to you a little poem about the great Minnesota get-together. We walk around for hours and eat foods on a stick. All the milk you can drink until somebody yaks. I jam a prano pup deep in my arrogant yap. Hey, check out that quarter horse taking a crap. The state's largest pig, he's something to see. His nards are fantastic. Touch him. It's free. Come on, Gorilla. Fish police. It's showtime. Well, we, uh, we welcome you. It's certainly our pleasure to welcome you to the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. Hang on to something, Cubby, because she's day one of the Minnesota State Fair. Today's the day. 12 days of madness over there in St. Paul. Hopefully everyone can behave themselves and we come out of the whole thing with good vibes. Good vibes, Cubby. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's fun going out there after the show, uh, hanging out a little bit, seeing uh, what's going on with some of the goofballs running around. I notice that every time we make an appearance at the fair, you're just going person to person and your first question is, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? (laughs) What's happening? Who the hell are you? What's going on? Uh, yeah. 12 days. It starts today. The real hard-ons are already lined up at the gates, don't you know? Oh, I bet. I think they crack the doors at 6. And you know there's a crowd mm-hmm. that every uh, every year they show up 11 o'clock last night. Sometimes it's a tradition, right? It's yeah. a family tradition. They want to get there early, be the first ones through the gate, because they're the ones that are going to get on Channel 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that are going to be interviewed by the local news. On Channel 11, can you imagine the thrill? <laughs> well, not as thrilling as Channel 4, 5, or 9. Right. But sure, it'd be a thrill. You guys know how it works over there. The food and the beer and the people watching. The I, games and the barns and the live music, including Motley Crue <laughs> this summer, this, this time around. There's live music, including Motley Crue. Um... Yeah, I got high hopes it's going to be a good one. So what is this now? Uh, Some information that was passed my way this morning. What's this about Dana uh, years ago at the State Fair? I I guess it could have been last year. It could have been uh, 15 years ago. You got banned from a midway game because you won too much? I did. I didn't. Tell us about that uh, setup. So I got banned. There's a game called there's a game called Scatterball there. It's not one of the popular ones. It's not the milk jug toss, the the basketball shot. It's a game kind of picture like a Plinko setup where you fire a marble up and around and it kind of drops down these little pegs very quickly and you got to catch it. And it's very hard to catch even one. It's almost impossible to catch all five that you need to win. But the sounds familiar. You catch it with what? It's just like a little little basket. You know, you kind of move it back and forth, left to right, and catch okay. it as it falls out the bottom of the pegs. As the ball is the ball is quickly pinballing on its way downward. Gravity is bringing it towards you, and you need to catch it in your little basket. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, so, sounds familiar. Maybe I'd uh, recognize it if I saw it. No mortal person who can walk up and play it for the first time and win it. The only way you can win is if you work at Camp Snoopy and you have eight-hour shifts where nobody wants to play scatterball, so the only thing you can do to pass the time is to play scatterball over and over again. And you had that experience. You worked at Camp, uh, how how do you say it again? Camp Snoopy. Camp Snoopy. You worked there when you were in high school. Yep. And then, so I basically became the rain man of (laughs) scatterball. Right. I could could do it blindfolded. I could do it, like, with my, with, like, backwards. I could do it left-handed, right-handed. I got so good at it. 
Then that summer, we went to the fair, and sure enough, they had scatterball there. So, so how like, many years ago was this? This was when I was 18, a senior in high school, the same year that I worked at oh. Camp Snoopy. So oh, my, my skills were fresh. Yeah, at that you point. were sharp as a blade. Uh huh. So, so I go up there, and I, I'm kind of coy at first. I'm like, oh, what's what, what's this game about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just playing the long game. Yeah, I'm playing the long con. And they're like, oh, That's all right. Awesome. So the guy kind of shows me, he pops the marble up, and then he goes, here, just try one to practice. I'm like, oh, no, man, this is tough, but I, I want to give it a shot. Oh, so you tanked the first one even. Yeah, so, 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 I, so I tanked the first game. I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I, I almost got one. I, I want to try to at least get one. So I, I plop more tickets down again and, you know, fired up. And like, oh, I got three. This, oh, I'm getting better. And then that's when I just turned the jets on and just went five for five, five for five, five for five. Winning all these stuffed animals, I'm giving them away to kids left and right. I, I felt like Robin Hood, you know, <laughs> stealing from the carnies and giving to the children. <laughs> I mean, how pissed were they? They th- did they realize? Okay, this guy's scamming us. Yeah. After a while, yeah, and to the point where like kids were handing me their tickets, play for me now, play for me. <laughs> and finally, the guy realized that I was a ringer. You know, that was a true rounder. I was a scatterball rounder. And he comes up, he goes, all right, listen, you can play one more time. Then you, you got, we, we can't do this all day. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I played one more time, got one more giant stuffed animal, gave it to a kid, and just walked off like a king. <laughs> On the topic of people showing up early, there's a person here that said they work for the city of St. Paul. There was a lady with a kid there standing at 10 p.m. Ye- or, excuse me, 2 p.m. yesterday. That's oh. insane. Oh, 2 o'clock wow. yesterday, somebody was already in line. With a kid. Oh, I'm sure that... That kid was excited about With that. With a child. That so then cruel. do you last like two hours? Once you they, they open the gate, two hours? Oh, boy, I'm tired. Hell, I don't know. Home. I don't know how long they can push it Jeez. beyond uh, walking in at uh, 6 a.m. this morning. It depends on uh, how you were raised. Do you think the crowd it is... It depends act- on, Wapple, maybe how hard you trained. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You know? Married down for sure, Jesus, <laughs> said that... Uh, he biked by the fair, he bikes to work, and it's already pretty nuts. I'm guessing a lot of people are in line because they want to be the first to buy that new Wapple shirt at the 93X booth. Yep, oh, definitely. yeah. Or maybe there's some Motley Crue tickets still available. <laughs> uh, I'll bet there are. Uh, yeah, I saw the boss wearing one of those T-shirts yesterday, the Wapple shirts. Can I tell you something, Wapple? I bet the boss didn't pay for that, but you're going to have to. I know. <laughs> Send us a picture of him wearing yep. that thing. So uh, tomorrow, yeah, 10 to noon, we'll make an appearance uh, at the 93X booth, and we'll bother you further about that tomorrow if you just want to swing by and say hello. Of course, buy something uh, or get out is the uh, motto again this year at the 93X booth. Um, you guys, so, did, yeah, I was yeah. going to ask if anybody's familiar with Becky G. Is that a, a big deal? No, I never heard of it. Mm. That's new, new to me as well. Okay, that's who's performing at the grandstand tonight. Becky G. Mm. Becky G. Oh, I, just, I went to high school with a girl named Becky, and she had the last name starting with the letter G. Could be her. She is very pretty. Yeah, mm-hmm. very attractive. She looks a little younger than, what did you graduate, 91? 1990. 1990, yeah, she looks a little younger than that. Okay. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> All right, well, well, we'll look for Becky G. So what happened here, Dana? Did you start something on social media? Did you ask folks um, on our Twitter page or whatever the terminology is uh, to tell us their state fair highlights and lowlights? Yeah, I wanted to know kind of what people's, you know, both because everybody shares the highlights, but I thought the lowlights were kind of fun too because some things happen at the fair sometimes. I've never had, I'm trying to think of a bad experience. I mean, outside of like, it's super busy, you're super hot, lines are long. I've never had... Something that's significant. Yeah, State Fair low light. Because I've always been a big, big, big fan of the Minnesota State Fair. Um, Like a lot of things in my life, with age, they're becoming less and less important. And I have to admit that the fair is one of them. Um, Day one of the fair, five years ago, ten years ago, all the way back to when I was a kid, day one of the fair, I would just be... Beside myself, I loved every inch of the place. It's it's just age uh, that has slightly changed my approach. I mean, if I get there once or twice this year, I'll be content. A number of years ago, I went 12 out of the 14 days. So I'm Beautiful. a big fair fan. Um, but, you know, like I've already explained a couple of times, it's dwindled. It's not as passionate a thing as it used to be. But... I, I'm, I'm racking my brain, too, for a low light. I mean, once I froze my nuts off there at a concert, <laughs> I did not prepare. You guys know my wardrobe, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
disgusting uh, pants of some sort and a sleeveless shirt. And uh, I just, you know, it was one of those days where it got up to about 75 during the day, but then at night, ooh, we did it cool off, <laughs> and the wind picked up, and all I had was that stupid sleeveless T-shirt. We're watching a show at the grandstand, and I straight up froze my balls up. Other than that, I can't. I mean, I've always had such great experiences. Yeah, there. I've always had yeah, fun. Me too. Do you remember what the show was? Was it worth it at least? Kiss. Okay. It was sort of worth it. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, this is you know recent Kiss, yeah. re- relatively recent Kiss, so it was sort of worth it. Yeah, like don't they have a jail and stuff? At the State Fair? I believe so. I'm happy to say that I have no idea. Yeah, only yeah, one way to I, find out, Waffle. Yeah, I wonder if, like, anyone in the audience has been in there. What? Has like, been in, a, in, a, in our listening audience. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, thought, I, I thought we were talking. Uh, I've never heard anyone talk about I, being put in jail at the I Minnesota either, State Fair. I've always heard they have one, but I don't yeah. know if that's just, uh, you know. Like scare tactic? Yeah, something like that or I've what. I've never heard one story of the Minnesota State Fair jail, so I'm going to go ahead and say it probably doesn't exist. We would have heard at least one story right. about the State yeah. Fair jail. I've seen Definitely. some bodies get the heave ho, but I've never seen anybody get thrown in any sort of jail. I've seen this... a few people who should have been incarcerated. Yep, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to guess in the Midway area. That can get wild at night, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I stay away from there. That's where all the teenagers like to hang out. Oh, teenagers. <laughs> Yuck. No way. Uh, no thank you. It Apparently, like, oral sex is very popular at the Minnesota State Fair. Oh, sure. There's a, quite a few people that are claiming they have had that at the Half point. of them are lying. Um, sure. but But, yeah, there are so many places that oral sex can happen. At the, at the Minnesota State Fair. Oh, ye old mill has to be number one. That, that somebody text yeah. in about ye old mill. Uh, what is that, the sky deal? That, yeah. That, oh, the sky ride? That, that yeah, goes that, across the fair there. You're the kinda, enclosed you're, you're, one, You're too. sitting in that enclosed uh, car, and you're hanging from the, the, the wire. Sure. Wouldn't oh, that Ferris be impressive wheel? if it was the chairlift one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't kneel. <laughs> I would be impressed by that. Maybe on a bench dedicated to yeah. somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> That'd be disrespectful. <laughs> a bench dedicated to the passing of... Yeah, my, yeah. my sister wanted to get that for uh, my dad. My dad loved the fair, and uh, my mom too, you know, but they, that was a thing for them. They, they used to go without us when we were kids. It was a lot cheaper, obviously, and they didn't have to haul kids around. Yeah. yeah. But so my sister had talked about doing that, getting a memorial bench for my dad. Next but, thing you know, someone's getting a BJ. That's what I was day. worried about. <laughs> Somebody takes a dump on it or something. Oh. Uh, okay, here yeah, we you'd have... Yeah, you would be judging all the people sitting on yeah, your hey, dad's bench. you can't sit there. You scumbag. Look at you. Wash yourself yeah. before you sit on my dad's memorial bench. My dad was a saint. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so uh, there's someone here that said, I worked for the Minnesota State Fair Police. There is definitely a jail. And a few people are texting and saying the same thing. Well, then, I'm, okay, okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and believe it. Well, a holding cell, right? That's what they've got, I'm sure. Well, how come I've never heard one story? I guess maybe because the fair is very lenient. Maybe that's why. But I have never. I'm 50. I'll be 53 years old in less than a month. I've never heard one story of anyone ever ending up in a holding cell or anything like it at the Minnesota State Fair. So maybe you must you must have to really F off to get put in there. A listener texted in. It doesn't have a name attached, but they said that um, they've been there. Yeah, a couple people have been there. Like you said, that uh, person was a. Was a police officer there? How what about, gone did you have to be? Like, I want to know what level was it where they had to throw yeah, I you mean, in there? Just a couple years ago, a, a, a good pal of mine just fell unconscious from alcohol <laughs> onto one of the streets, and and he was just left there. <laughs> um, so yeah, you must really have to come on cork to get put into the. That'd the street so sweepers are coming by. Yeah. Hey, bud. Time you know, to wake up. I realize it's just a holding cell until, you know, the cops pick you up and take you, you know, downtown. But how cool would it be if you had to go to jail, if that's where you served your sentence? Two years at the state fair. <laughs> yeah. Your family comes and visits you. It's got a bologna sandwiches, it's prano puffs and the funnel cakes. Heck no, yeah. I can't have another one. <laughs> Yeah, and you look, one morning you wake up, you look next to you, it's Goldie Gopher or yeah. something, you know, or or uh, one of the... Uh, what one of they, the farm animals. What are they called? Um, um, Fairbanks and uh, Fairchild. You know, the two, yeah. the oh, two yeah. gopher. Yeah. You're, you're in jail with mascots and, uh, and clowns and... Uh, uh, okay, so what about a highlight then? If we're talking, feel free, by the way, to text us, 68683. No, no, I got it wrong. Uh, text us at 651 989 
feel free to text us your highlight or low light of your state fair career. So we kind of bounced around a little bit. Doesn't sound like anyone has a real serious low light. I just thought what of about a low light. A, oh, you thought of a low light. Yeah, it was. Uh, was it I the was... sex in the bathroom, the <laughs> urine on the floor? I and mean, the... that could have been better. But it, <laughs> no, it was when I was a kiddo, I went into that haunted house that they have there. Sure. With uh... my parents and I at, got way too terrified. I, I can't remember why. Did you and pee so, yourself? No, but they had to. At the time, I don't know if they have, like, stairs that go from the second floor now, but there was no way out unless you, like, continued to go through the haunted house. So they had to set up, like, a ladder to the second floor, and I had to go down the ladder. But at the time, I was very afraid of heights. Oh, my gosh. And so that made everything so much worse. And I remember crying so hard for two, three hours after that. I think we had to leave the fair because oh, of me. My God. I just got done saying my dad's a saint, but now I remembered one. You reminded me. Uh, I got yelled at because I was scared to go on a ride. My dad berated me big time. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Be a man, he said. Yeah, and uh, I'm not. I'm embarrassed to say the ride, but I was terrified as a little kid. When I was, you know, when I got older, I loved him. I'd go on anything, but when I was little, I was scared of rides. So you said, no, I'm not going, and your old man lit you up in front of everybody. Oh, yeah. What was the ride? <laughs> I don't want to say. Was it the fairest Tell us the ride. Uh, was it the push pop? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't the push pop. <laughs> no. It wasn't the push pop? Uh, okay. Uh, is it called a fair? No, not the fairest. What's the one? Like a merry-go-round. Oh, the carousel? <laughs> <laughs> and I was scared because there was a motorcycle that did a wheelie. And that my dad put me on that one. And Josh. That's All right, so we got to go. Are you friggin' kidding uh, me? We got we to gotta play some commercials. Do we have to here. play commercials? Yeah, we have... <laughs> so cute. No, they're, they're saying we're good. The we, friggin'... we don't have to Oh, no, play we, we don't have to go? No, no, no. no. This we... is very uncomfortable. Is there a song? <laughs> Do we have to? We have... No, no, they're telling me Are no. we obligated to talk about the Motley Crue show? <laughs> uh, the little kids merry-go-round. Keep going, yeah. Where they've got a little, uh, sometimes they put like, some, it looks like a bench. Yep, yep. You, you can one sit of those there, there, or you can sit on an animal. Sure, uh, like a horse. A or motorcycle, that goes up and, and the motorcycle, the, the front tire lifts just ever so like slightly, four inches, <laughs> four, and then it goes back. That's right. You were too afraid to get on that damn terrified. Thing? Yeah, you deserved what you got from your dad that day. Um, that's for sure. What did he say? Do you have any uh, memory of what he said? I, I was really little. Are you freaking kidding me? Probably not as little as I. I, I hope I was. When <laughs> I die, you better not dedicate a bench to my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he went off on me big time. And I was more scared of my dad than anything. So I'm like, all right, I'll get on this thing. Did your sister and your brother go on the ride? Oh, yeah. My sister would go on anything when she was little. You, you, you couldn't even bring yourself to take the ride even though you knew your younger sister was going to go on the damn thing? Nope. Nope, could not do it until my dad yelled at me. S-A-W-F-T soft is what that was. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> I feel I bad was for afraid. doing that. <laughs> I was afraid of some things, too, as a child, Josh. I was. But, I, you know, I, as, a, as a parent now, I could see my dad's embarrassment. Like, oh, no, what am I raising here? Yeah. <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> mm. As far as a highlight goes, I mean, wow, that's a tough question also. So many. Always had great times. I think going to Weird Al with you was one of the highlights. We had a me. great time at the Weird Al Yankovic show. Is that when we got the meatloaf Sunday, Or pot Whoa. roast Sunday? I forgot. Which was it? Pot roast. Pot roast Sunday? I believe so. That's a highlight for me. That, that friggin' wagon, I think, no longer makes an appearance at the fair. I haven't Yeah, we tried to find it the last I'm, couple yeah, of years. I'm no expert anymore. I used to be able to tell you what's on every friggin' corner. But my memory of the Pot Roast Sunday stand was over by the Midway, kind of close to where we are located now, where 93X is located now. Um, kind of kitty corner from where they have the deep fried pickles yep. now. Okay, that's my memory of the Pot Roast Sunday stand or wagon or whatever you want to call it. I haven't seen it in years. One of my favorites. By the way, I was just talking about how I freeze. I froze my pills off at a Kiss concert 15 years ago. After the show was over, I made a beeline for that pot roast Sunday stand because I knew that meal would warm me up a little bit. But anyway, we had fun at the Weird Al. I've had fun, great fun at uh, many concerts 
over the years. David Lee Roth played there many years ago. Uh, Journey played there many years ago. And just great, great shows. Uh, one of the highlights for me for many years was the old stock car race before they oh, wow. yeah. before they took that out of the mix, before they uh, you know dug up the track and put in yep. the new yeah, concert area. And the new concert area is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It, oh, it, it's so much better than it. You mean, I don't know if you young people realize this, but back in the day, the stage would be out in the middle of that area, same general area, but there were no seats mm -hmm. because of the racetrack. So you'd be in the grandstand and you'd be 50 yards away from the friggin' stage. Mm -hmm. It You couldn't come anywhere near it. What was funny to me is a few times there were bands, you know how rock bands are, they don't know what the hell end is up. They're drunk, they're drugged up, they're, they're, they're covered in 25 year old blondes. They don't even know where they're playing, right? And a few bands, you know, obviously they'd look at the venue during uh, sound check and whatnot, and all of them assumed, well, this empty space between the grandstand and our stage is likely going to be filled with people. They'd come out on the stage and say, what the hell's going on here? No one's allowed to stand on the floor, on the ground? Mm -hmm. They didn't get it. But we, we fans were not allowed to stand on that racetrack, so there was that massive gap between, it was the oddest thing. So it's, it is awesome now that venue is absolutely perfect now saw a lot of great bands there special ed teacher she's a, says she's lived her whole life she's 46 never been to the fair well join us one know. of these fridays some people just don't care yeah mm -hmm. and i've been over the years i've been surprised just how many people I mean, just I get do it. Not, they do not. They don't care. They've never been there, and they don't have any interest in it at all. Probably Crazy. the crowds, right? Yeah. I mean, that's mostly what I hear. Like, ah, geez, I don't know if I could handle it. Because sometimes it is overwhelming yeah. how many people are there. And, you know, folks with strollers stopping in the middle, not paying any attention, you know, a lot of holdups. I, I can understand. I, uh, hear, I always hear the crowds, and I also hear the getting in and out from people who. Yeah, the parking and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, that, can that, be that very are the, stressful. My friends who don't like to go to the fair, those are the two things they always cite. I get stressed by that. Music teacher, speaking of parking, music teacher, she's just said, uh, look for the Mung College Prep Academy. They have a $15 uh, parking lot super close to the fair, and all proceeds go to their clubs and sports. So oh, cool. see that, you want to help out a listener, that'd be great. Uh, you know, um, there's other online conversation going on. Uh, there has been for a few days leading up to today, day one of the fair. There's been some online conversation, people talking about what they don't like about the fair. And I have beef with a couple of the comments. Uh, this isn't 1976 anymore. What is this person talking about? If you don't get there on day one, those bathrooms are rank. No, they're not. No, uh, they, they I clean used to them clean those. Quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, it throughout actually. The day. And they seem to add new ones, too, almost every year. It's about, uh, if I can remember correctly, four or five times um, in a shift. So, like, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., they, they get cleaned quite often. Nine out of ten. I mean. I think that's somebody just trying to create something. Probably. Yes. Outhouses still. Yeah, of course, outhouses, you're flipping a coin, whether it's going to be. But are you talking about the bathroom bathrooms? No, 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 no. That, that, that They are greatly, greatly improved to 25, 30, 35 years. They're Especially cleaner than the most. new ones, yeah. too, by the big uh, Ferris wheel and the Kidway and stuff like that. I Those mean, what ones do you are want? great. Yeah, you that's want? where you want to go. There's no line ever. Mm -hmm. You want some guy in a suit in there uh, handing you a towel and a mint and whatnot? <laughs> I mean, no, the bathrooms are in terrific shape at the fair. I'm not going to listen to that. Compared to a lot of the bars that I hang out, I hang out with, I'd eat food off the floor of the State Fair bathrooms. Dude, they're uh, just, okay. <laughs> I was at a store the other day uh, with my wife, and I had to go to the bathroom. I walked in and walked out. It's, I've never smelled anything like it in my life. Usually I can go through anything, but I thought, my health is at risk here. This is a terrible smell. I don't know what was going on in there. Somebody was having a real tough tummy day. I like this text from Dental Babe Jesus who said, hey, which days are you guys going to be there? So I can avoid it at all costs. Oh. Well, stay away again both Fridays. About 10 a.m. to noon, we'll be at the 93X booth for sure around there. And yes. probably longer, just kind of depending on how it goes. Some of you just don't give two pumps, and, and uh, that's fine. I used to be more sensitive to that. Not anymore. Oh, God, I mean, you know the story about my buddy Hot Tub throwing the uh, diarrhea-soaked rubber boot at a complete stranger and slapping it across their chest. <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of great memories from the Minnesota State Fair. Uh, watching my dad 
help a farmer pull a calf out of a cow. That is really sweet. That was cool. Yeah. You know, my dad and I were walking together through the cow barn. We were like shortcutting our way out of there. And I remember it was fairly late at night and we were leaving. And uh, there was this massive cow lying on its side and half of a calf sticking out. It was giving birth. And uh, the farmer was doing whatever he could to assist the process. He needed a hand. And my dad, growing up as a farm kid, you know, he knew everything about it. And my dad said, you need a little help? And the farmer said, yeah. So they both rolled up their sleeves and splash. <laughs> oh, wow. Stupid little calf. <laughs> Come shooting out. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. It was disgusting. It would be tough. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm like, yeah, my dad can jump over the fence and help you out. I was certainly proud of him for that. But when that splashdown happened, Ooh. oh, God, no. Uh. Oh, God. <laughs> Poop Pumping Jesus said, I clean the porta potties at the fair. We work hard to try and keep them clean for everyone. I know they do. You've seen them out there for sure. Hell yeah. I don't want any criticisms of the crappers. You should have seen them when I was 10. Oh, my God. It was, it was a horror show. <laughs> the bathrooms at the state fair when I was a kid. Oh, God. I would clench my ass cheeks. I would hold my, I'd do anything not to go in there. We are very lucky, the state of the bathrooms these days. You got to be kidding me. No doors on the men's stalls. No. <laughs> Anywhere you friggin' went. I'm too shy for that. Yeah. I, yeah, I was. Oh, boy. I would hold it for that reason if I had to go uh, that type of bathroom. Imagine being a 10-year-old kid walking into the John. You know, of course, uh, I was exaggerating. I, I, I tried to hold it, but of course you couldn't. Imagine being a 10-year-old kid walking into the John, and here comes some 76-year-old farm boy wearing overalls. No door on the stall. He drops it all to the floor and cuts a turd for you. You know, it's bad. He's swinging. It's bad on either end, right? Yeah. Like, you're like, God, hurry up, get out of here so I can you know, avoid as many people as possible. But when you walk in and make eye contact oh, with someone boy. in that position, oh. that's awkward. Oh, no. That's seared oh, in your memory. No. My, my, I can't my, imagine My that. parents were probably wondering oh. why I didn't want to eat more at the fair. Well, my appetite was ruined after the first trip to the bathroom. I get, I get crap because, and, you know, I understand. I deserve to get the crap for this, but. Usually the stuff I get at the fair is something I can get all year round at the establishment they have, you know, it, it, just like like uh, Dino's. I, I noticed Dino's. that about you. But I'll go to Dimitri's. I, I love Dimitri's there. So, yeah, it's usually stuff that you can get anywhere. I'll get that at the, <laughs> the fair. The first time we went to the fair together, we were very young, and that was when I was very passionate about the fair, and I would judge people, absolutely on what they ate. What are you doing that for? You can get that any day. And Josh was that guy. I learned it right away. He's like, I'm going to swing over to Famous Dave's. <laughs> <laughs> famous Dave's too. And now, I mean, of course, well, there isn't a Famous Dave's anymore. Now it's a... Uh, oh, well, it, it's R a R C's? You know, it's a great place. I think mm -hmm. it's R.C.'s. And it, yeah, I think you're right. R.C.'s, same spot where Famous Dave's used to be. Great food there. Ice cold friggin' yeah. beer there. Oh, yeah. My favorite beer joint, I will say again for the 30th straight year, uh, Midway Men's Club. Shout out to the Midway Men's Club. I love your mm -hmm. beer. Anyway, I, I, I learned, I, I remember saying to myself, I don't know if I really want to walk around the fair with Josh. <laughs> He's stopping by all these, what do you, what's the fancy word? Like franchise places. Yeah, places you could get all year round. Yeah. Josh is like, ooh, I heard they got a new McDonald's booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't like to take chances, Wapple. <laughs> now I'm less judgmental. All right, we got to get her done. We got we to gotta move on. But uh, today is day one of the fair, and we'll be talking about it, I'm sure, the next couple of days leading up to our appearance there. What else is going on? Am I forgetting anything? What day is it today? So it's Thursday. Thursday. We'll talk to Randy Shaver at about 7.30. But for now, we'll take a little break. We'll come back. We'll hit the bathrooms with doors and running water and everything. And uh, come back here in a few minutes on the half Ass Morning Show. Text BLUE, B-L-U-E, BLUE, to 651-989-9393 for a chance to win tickets to Weezer. Weezer will be coming to the XL Energy Center Thursday, September 4th. 
surprise provided by Live Nation. This keyword is good today, August 22nd until midnight. Did you know that Standard Heating opened its doors over 90 years ago? That's right. Tony Ferreira opened the doors in 1930. Now ran by his granddaughter, Claire Ferreira. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning today and experience the customer service and care that holds true today. It is savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning's State Fair Specials. Deals on deals on deals that can save you thousands. Visit standardheating.com for all their state fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. Are you tired of losing your fantasy football league year after year? Lindsey Rhodes, Emmy-winning sportscaster and football analyst, is your new secret weapon on the Believe Fantasy Football Show. Watch the quarterbacks and his ADP. I think he has massive high-end upside. Get expert analysis on player rankings. Wide receiver 22 in fantasy, Cecil Shorts. That kid can run, so I'm thinking he can have a breakout season this year. And you can too by searching the Believe Fantasy Football Show. That's B-L-E-A-V, wherever you listen. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. You know, a few minutes ago, Josh told us a great story. We've been talking about the Minnesota State Fair. Of course, today is day one. They let in the real hard-ons, the real maniacs, I think, got let through the gate about 27 minutes ago. It's uh, it's rolling as of right now. We were talking about the State Fair. Highlights and lowlights from our from our lifetime of visiting the Minnesota State Fair. Josh told us about a low light. He was a little kid, and his dad just cut loose and hollered at him about being a damn sissy (laughs) in front of everybody because Josh wouldn't get on the kiddie carousel. Now, the kiddie carousel featured a stationary motorcycle, and every, oh, 10 seconds or so, Oh, that front tire would lift up a little bit. Do a bit of a wheelie. And then it would go back down. You were afraid of that, and you refused to get on the carousel, embarrassing your dad. Yeah, I was terrified. I mean, terrified to do it, and my dad was having none of it. Yeah. Hilariously, uh, a listener in our audience, Half Sack Jesus, was able to text us and provide us a picture of him and his little sister in the early 80s, riding that damn carousel (laughs) at the Minnesota State Fair. And he wrote, even my sister got on the damn motorcycle with me. I know. I'm embarrassed by it. What a great picture. How the hell was he able to provide that so quickly? I want to search for that. Half Sack Jesus. Half Sack Jesus. That's great. That is a really awesome picture. Josh is going to get PTSD. (laughs) And, the, and the, the, he and his little sister just look like they're having the time. Well, he looks like he's having the time of his life. That's hilarious. <laughs> Th- thank you for that. That's funny that he's got that picture. Other texts. Now, I went on it. Like I was saying earlier, I was more scared of my dad than anything. My dad, he cured a lot of fears by yelling at me and terrifying me as a kid. So when he hollered at you and said, you little sissy, you're going to get on. That didn't scare you enough to get on Oh, it? no, I got on it and rolled oh, it. Oh, you yeah, did? Yeah, that's what oh, I was saying. Like, I was more scared oh, of my dad. I'm sorry. I didn't follow the end of but the story. I, I so. fought him at first. Like, I, no, no, I want to go on something else. <laughs> you know, let me go on, the, the, like you said, the bench. I'll sit on the bench. Yeah, there was a bench, and then you can sit on a little duck or something. So you, you did eventually sit on the motorcycle so what was what was that feeling like the first time that tire raised up in the air did you think you were minutes away from death oh, I thought I was gonna fall off yeah but yeah I was I was glad I did it afterwards okay I missed that I'll go on it. it again someday I'll build up the courage and Let- I ended up you know uh, getting into motorcycles and I did a couple wheelies on them by accident uh, never on purpose but yeah I, he conquered maybe he conquered that fear for me let's you and I if we can um, this year at the fair, get a picture of the two of us riding that kitty motorcycle. <laughs> Let's do it. And we will send it back to Half Sack Jesus as a thank you. Uh, other text messages real quick on highlights and lowlights of our listeners' experiences at the Minnesota State Fair. Just a couple quick ones here. Uh, this is uh, Should Have Kept My Mouth Shut Jesus. At a ZZ Top concert a number of years ago at the Minnesota State Fair, He got knocked smooth out and had four front teeth knocked down his throat. He got punched. Oh, is that? I was going to ask. I was picturing a drunken fall or something. No, punched, huh? He got punched in the yap at the ZZ Top Show. Four teeth rolled down into his stomach, and now he has to have upper dentures. (laughs) That's awesome. 
And Josh, you know, I don't normally like to talk much about our ex coworkers uh, because I hated most of them because they were <laughs> stupid idiots. I don't like to talk much about our ex coworkers, but this is an exception. A listener named Mary talking about one of her state fair highlights. She ran into our old coworker, Big Lair. Oh, really? Awesome. I miss Big Lair. Ran into Big Lair at the State Fair. One of my favorite characters we've ever had around here. I've always loved revisiting Big Lair stories. Couple, oh God, it's got to be five years ago. Big Lair was a big guy. Long hair. And he talked like this. Yeah. Yeah, there go Wapple right there. <laughs> Man, Big Lair going to go to the State Fair. All the women going to be looking for Big Lair. That's how he came off, right? A few years ago, I ran into him. I think we were at a Pigs game. And Big Lair asked about Josh. How Josh doing? Yeah. How Josh? And I said, Josh is doing, he's doing well. You know, he's got a couple of stepkids. He's got a real kid. Don't, don't say that. He's That's married. Look at it. Married guy. Happy guy. What did Lair say back to me? He said, yeah, Josh a pimp. <laughs> I was working. Uh, I was working with Big Lair at a at a Menards, right? Like at ten in the morning, we're working at a Menards, and um, Big Lair. He's a me- member of our promotions department. He's a member of our show for a while, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah Big Lair, he banged that chick over there." I'm like, "Okay," it just was drop dead gorgeous girl, right? And he's like, "Yeah, took her home from the bar last night." Now, did you notice that he that that wasn't. That Big Lair re- talked about himself in the third person, yeah. just the way Josh put it. Right that now. was that was yeah. part of the fun, right? Big Lair gonna go to get a cheeseburger. Yeah, that's the way he came off. So Big Lair claims that he he banged this knockout, right? He just and I, you, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And she you know? just happened to be strolling through Menards yeah, at ten o'clock that morning. Exactly. Right. All of a sudden, she comes over. He banged that <laughs> knockout the night before. I couldn't believe it. And I loved Big Lair, but I thought there's no way anybody I know would have had sex with that girl, especially last night, and she's at Menards at 10 in the morning. She came to see him. Yep. Oh, my I God. Yep. It. Awesome. He, he left quite he an impression. He was the pimp. He was a pimp. He was the pimp. He's still a pimp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I miss him. There go Vivian Campbell right there. <laughs> that was when we had Def Leppard in studio. Larry was very excited to meet Def Leppard. And their guitar player, Vivian Campbell. All right, by God. Underutilized uh, in Def Leppard, in my opinion. Would you call him an underutilized performer? I think so, by far. I mean, Phil Collins is wonderful, but uh, I think that he's underutilized. Let's fire this pig up. Let's fire up today's stupid news report. And uh, we got a story that sounds like it came from the late 70s. Uh, a story that sounds like it came from a hard drinking roadhouse from the late 70s. Instead, it comes from modern day Providence, Rhode Island. A 40 year old dude got his ass whooped at a bar in Providence. According to the story, a group of 30 some year old dudes broke his jaw for him. Over the song he selected on the jukebox. <laughs> and the poor bastard ended up in the hospital. So, um, a couple questions here. Now, Providence, doesn't that have a reputation of being terrifying? I like have no idea. Uh, dangerous, I wouldn't know. Dangerous place to be. I have to say that I do not know Dick Tracy about Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, Rhode Island, you kind of forget about. Maybe because it's so small. So you, 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 you think maybe you've heard it's a violent Yeah, I've place? heard that that was like a scary place oh, to really? be. Oh, really? Okay. And then the second question is, jukeboxes now, is it basically a, like a fancy-looking iPod? No, or or a, do they still have like 45s and CDs and stuff? It probably no, depends on fancy the... Fancy-looking iPod. It, lo- it looks like a jukebox, but then it's got a screen. But yeah, so it's all digital. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, God. it depends on the joint you're in. I, yeah. I, there, there's a couple of joints that I know that still have... An old school jukebox just for the retro vibe. Yeah, um, I think it'd be but, cool to have something like that for the retro vibe. My, I know my pals know how to start the jukebox from their cell phones. Yeah, yeah. I touch do that. Tunes. Uh-huh. I don't know how to oh, do really? it. Oh, cool. so much mm-hmm. money has been spent on touch oh, yeah. tunes. <laughs> it's, that's hilarious because you could do it on your phone for $14 a month or whatever. But yeah, just, then just having that ability is pretty cool. Yeah, and then you can 
pay extra money to skip songs too. Yeah, to yeah. Put oh, your right song. to the front. No, I'm paying five dollars because I don't want to hear that. Yeah, big layer don't want to hear that one. <laughs> Evil garbage man Jesus. Yes, Providence is rough. It's uh, there's a lot of mob there apparently. Oh. Oh. Hmm. So here's this guy again. He's just a drinking. Pops a song onto the jukebox, and a group of dudes take him out in the parking lot and break his jaw for him. And before we go any farther, no, I don't know what song caused him to get his ass whipped. It would be so much more fun if we knew that, but that information wasn't included in the story. I may have some extra information when I wrap up the story. I may have an idea. I'll get back to you on that. Maybe it was Lady of Spain. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I was... Even what movie? Nervous. Slapshot. I was even nervous to uh, say this to you, but I saw a few people joking about what band it could have been, and a few there's a few people picking on the Scorpions, saying what? that if you play the Scorpions, you deserve to get your ass beat. What? <gasps> have, have you never heard of rock and roll music? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really understand. It's probably people that have never really heard the Scorpions. They were just picking a name. That How do you pick on a them? band that was basically a hard rock machine for about 40 years straight, the Scorpions? If you pick on the Scorpions, you wouldn't know a good song if someone stuck it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Masshole Jesus on Providence says the mafia is pretty big there. That's what a few people are saying. Um, but then... Snot Rocket Jesus said, I've got family there. There's nothing scary about that state. But Snot Rocket Jesus, can you imagine her? We've met her. Can you imagine her intimidated by anything? No, no. She, no. she can hold her own. Nope. She doesn't scare me. So according to the local police in stinking Providence, the dude said he got dragged out the bar. Uh, it was a joint called Dead Beats Bar. And the fellas tuned him up there in the parking lot. They knocked him the F out. And when he came to, his jaw was in pieces. This was, of course, after 1 a.m. when this happened. And as usual, I'd like to add that part of me certainly says that's what you get for being out drinking after 10 p.m. I feel bad the guy got knocked out and had his jaw broken for him, but that's what you get for being out after 10 p.m. It's bigger when it's warm out, Jesus said. He's pretty sure the song was Judas Priest breaking the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Friggin' dick. <laughs> Now, here's this new information that's coming out. So Josh said he heard people mentioning it was the Scorpions. Yeah, they were joking around. Like, Oh, they were? Yeah, they were joking oh. like what band would deserve to get your jaw broken if you played. Yeah, they were ripping on the Scorpions. I I'm going to have a hard time getting over that, why you would ever lump the Scorpions in in a negative light like that. Uh, according to a few people who claimed they were at the bar that night, they claimed they were at Dead Beats Bar in Providence, Rhode Island that night. They say that this guy who got tuned up had it coming. They said he was acting like a real prick, insulting people. He kept playing square dance music. Oh. He shoved a woman. A patron had enough. Took him outside and beat the piss out of him. They say it was only one person. This story's been blown completely out of proportion. They say this guy deserved it. He was not a victim. That's people, people who claim they were there that night. But it does sound like, you know, if it if it was legitimately a guy playing a song that the bar crowd doesn't like and they beat his ass for him, that sounds like the 70s to me. I remember, I, go ahead. I was just going to say about uh, square dancing music, that's the only dancing I got kind of decent at when we had to do the square dancing uh, you know, lessons in school. Sure. Oh. I could do -si do and I could turn my partner around. Oh, I bet you could. Yeah. I struggled. I struggled quite mightily. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, with square dancing, I, I sucked at it. I remember that uh, that setup. You didn't have to have, like, a lot of grace or, you know, be super smooth with coordination. Like that. I got real lucky. Um, I remember the day. It was, I think we were sixth or seventh graders when, for some ungodly reason, does anyone have any idea why we were taught uh, square dancing? I in, don't know. In nope. school? I always wondered that. <laughs> was it just kind we of We never a... taught any other dancing. Were you guys? It was just oh, square dancing. Everything. Yeah, we, I, we oh, learned really? quite a few. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had, like, dancing curriculums every single year. 
oh, during okay. school. Yeah, it was like always... for us, it was just square dancing. Well, yeah, we, we learned like waltz, salsa, the foxtrot. Uh, uh, Wapple, are you sure this wasn't the TV show Fame that you're referencing? No. Yeah, did um, you go to like an art way... school, the no. Rudy Purpich School of Arts or something? No. Here's my guess. Through. Elementary oh. school through high school. That's really stupid. Here's my guess. <laughs> my guess is it. my guess is the reason they dumped square dancing on us when we were sixth and seventh grade kids. Was this like almost a an attempt to get us comfortable mixing with the opposite sex? Was that all it was and it was disguised as a dance class? Probably. Okay. And it was like the least sexy dance, right? Mm-hmm. Some of the ones you mentioned, Waffle, right. are sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is like the least. But speaking of the old days when the jukebox and what got played seemed to be a much bigger deal than it is today. When I was a little kid, my dad used to like the bar hop on Saturday afternoons and he'd bring my brother and I with him. And I do remember one of the joints we walked into, it was shadier than most. And I know it was, I was not familiar with it. You know, we'd go to this joint and that joint, and I knew the bars, and I knew some of the people after a while. I remember we walked into a joint once. It was very small, shadier than usual, but my dad had to meet up with a couple of hillbillies and have a couple of cold beers. And these guys looked pretty hard. And I remember... They were playing both kinds of music at the at the bar that day, Josh. Country and Western. Both. <laughs> and my brother and I went over to the jukebox and we played the song Big Shot by Billy Joel because we liked the guitar. And that song, okay, that song came out in 78. So my brother and I were seven years old. Apparently that was not the kind of music that they enjoyed at this honky-tonk that our dad had dragged us into that day. And I still remember the mean looks that a couple of the grown dudes were giving my brother and I for interrupting their Merle Haggard marathon or whatever it was <laughs> and playing a rock and roll song. We quit. We I was frozen in fear. The way and it was a little ridiculous how these forty-year-old men were looking at two seven, <laughs> but they were friggin' pissed. And I remember we we tried to settle things down by playing a Willie Nelson song with our next quarter. That probably calmed everybody down, right? It did. <laughs> Excessive diarrhea, Jesus said. Kids need to learn how to do taxes and balance a checkbook. Schools be like, shut up and square dance. Mm. <laughs> yeah, really. It you is know? so true how many basic life skills we all missed out on. Because we were square dancing? Mm-hmm. And yeah. other things, too, that are now unnecessary. They no. taught me so many of, like, uh, I don't know, like the typical dances they or typical songs they play at a wedding, like the cha-cha slide. And stuff I could have like used that. that. Yeah, I actually am very thankful that I know how to do those dances. It's it's been that's, beneficial. Yeah, that's something you might actually use. I've never been somewhere where a square dance broke up. <laughs> no, yeah. A never. square dance dance off. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, like I said, I got very lucky on the day where they said, "Okay, it's square dancing time." Uh, time to. I remember we were paired up randomly. And uh, that was a, a scary thing for me. Uh, I did not want to be paired up with some gal that... I got lucky and I was paired up with a gal that I socialized with regularly. So that took a lot of the awkwardness away. I got real lucky. I didn't but, have that same experience. No. Yeah, I didn't no. either. <laughs> <laughs> but here was the only problem. This gal that I socialized with regularly, who I got paired up with for square dancing... Oh, did she like to talk? Oh, no. Oh, God. That was my first experience where I I kind of learned, wow, there are some people who need to let you know every single thing that crosses their mind. Everything. I'm trying to listen to the effing song. <laughs> so, Josh, you didn't uh, get so lucky. Huh? No, I didn't have quite the same experience. I remember there would be an uneven number, and they might have to pair two boys together. <laughs> it's not good for those two. <laughs> that would be my luck. That would be. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh. No, your luck would be you had to square dance with the teacher. Yeah, right? oh, yeah totally. <laughs> the gym teacher. That's uh, teaching that, that is a reputation destroyer mm-hmm. if you have to dance with the gym teacher. All right, speaking of music, I can't remember. Did I see you guys at the last Macklemore show that came through town, or did you miss it? I missed it, missed sadly. It. Yeah. Are you guys Macklemore fans? You you like the song Thrift Shop? I used to in yeah. like middle school, high school, but I, 
I didn't know he was still making music. He's got yeah, some good I tunes. I don't really either. keep up with the guy, though. I thought I saw you. I guess that was someone that looked like you. These <laughs> days, Macklemore is doing shows in Slovakia, and, and that's when you know you've hit it big. <laughs> uh, he was playing a show this past Sunday over there in Slovakia, Josh. Anyways, a Macklemore fan, a, a young Slovak lady, uh, she was so pumped to be seeing whoever Macklemore is in person that she jumped up on stage with the prick. And this was a mistake uh, for this gal, not only because she outed herself as a Macklemore fan, but in all the excitement, she forgot that she was wanted by police. (laughs) Oh, no. I wish I had that level of chill where I could forget I was wanted by police. I can't imagine a situation where I would forget that. Josh, you'd be hiding in a basement closet somewhere. Oh, yeah. I turned myself in. Yeah, that's a better point. I can, I, that is, that's a level of chill I, I will never achieve. I believe this is how it played out, uh, but the story was difficult to follow because it was written in Slovak. I believe the gal, once she got up on stage with whoever Macklemore is, she went live on Slovakian social media. <laughs> and while she's up on stage, the cops recognized her. The cops were looking uh, at Social media, I guess. And they recognized her as a wanted individual, and she was arrested. But the cops were nice enough to let her have her little moment. They reportedly waited until the song was over to arrest her. Oh, that's cool. Despite her terrible taste in music, this gal sounds fun. She's a 24-year-old. I'm not entirely sure what she was wanted for, but it says here back in 20-plus-19, she ran around topless at a local soccer game, and that might have been why the cops were looking for her. Huh. I don't know. To give her an award? Running around topless? Yeah. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Thank you for being cool. <laughs> yeah, to, to see a second act, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> ma'am, here's the key to the city. <laughs> I said city, ma'am. <laughs> there, uh, you know, it reminds me, we, we told the story before, but we had a, a young lady who worked here as a salesperson. She'd been here about two weeks, called in sick, and then forgot that she called in sick and posted herself all over the Twins game, hammered, having a great time, mm-hmm. and also forgot that she was Facebook friends with her new boss. No. Oh. She didn't. That was it for her. Boy, I'm sorry I missed this show because it says here now uh, the Macklemore concert also included EDM artists until 3 a.m. Oh, That's wow. Waffle's hmm. deal. Yeah. There just isn't enough beer or drugs to make me enjoy something like that. Now I kind of wonder who was there. 50 Cent was there. No, no way. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I'll tell you a little story about a fan jumping on stage. I went to a rock concert a number of years ago, big-time rock band, and they said at one point or another, they said, hey, uh, who wants to run up here and get on stage with us? By God, we're the type of band we want our fans on stage. And a handful of people rushed up and were allowed on stage. One of them I instantly recognized as a local television personality, a young lady. I instantly recognized her. Hey, that's that gal from that one show, television show. The band then kicked in to a really, really filthy song. Really filthy song. Uh, I mean, we're all grown folks. It's not as if everyone in the crowd was saying, oh, God, this is that's not where I'm going with this. It's just I watched this young lady television personality. I may be wrong, but I watched her facial expression go from excitement, because she was a big fan of the band, obviously. Her facial expression went from excitement to, as the song got filthier and filthier, I could tell she was thinking, maybe I shouldn't be up here in this moment. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I think she was thinking to herself, I I want to be taken seriously as a local television personality and now I'm up on stage with this band where they're just they're just uh, blatantly singing about a blow job. You know what I mean? I shouldn't have got on stage with two live crew apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong, but I was elbowing my buddy. I was saying, "Does she does she look a little bit uncomfortable at this point?" I wonder if it's one of those where they knew one song. You know, she just knew one song, the the safest one. Like uh, when Extreme got popular, the band Extreme. Yeah. And more than those words, were dark days. <laughs> those were dark days. I, I'm I'm a fan. I know. Uh, well, their guitar player Nuno, one of my all-time favorites. But yeah, when all the girls in school loved Extreme until they bought the record and realized this is not what I thought it was going to be. 
You know, oh, sure. They just they were familiar with more than words. By the way, speaking of extreme. Yes. Uh, I want to thank Alex P. Keaton Bobblehead Jeebus. He sent us an extreme, oh. like uh, some sort of box set here, a fancy looking box set. I feel we should return this. It's too fancy. Thank you for this. God help us. You yeah, guys can't nice. listen to it. I'm, I'm hoarding it here. Oh. <laughs> that's that's going to break my heart to not be able to listen to one of my least favorite rock bands ever. <sighs> All right, here's my favorite story of the day. Even though we're kind of running late, I, I, I really want to get to this. You want to talk about someone who needs to wake up and smell the friggin' coffee. Uh, there's a lady here in effing China. She's somebody's mother. She's got a daughter. She claims her daughter became pregnant by wearing underwears that were purchased online. Lady, if your daughter really is pregnant, you're going to have to up and come to grips with the fact that your daughter is giving it up. Yep. She, yep. That's exactly what she's afraid. To. Some, You know, some people will never, never believe their kid can do anything they wouldn't approve of. Oh, of course. Of course not. Those are usually the most devious kids, right? The ones that <laughs> have their parents completely oblivious to what's going on. This is so funny to me. This clueless mom has been complaining to the company that sold the drawers to her and her daughter saying basically you bastards your dirty underwears put a baby in my daughter that is terrific that's amazing <laughs> it's like the old i got the std from sitting on a toilet seat excuse <laughs> despite <Dude>. shh <laughs> quiet it's <laughs> not an excuse it's you just real. ruined it for a few it's people it's real <laughs> despite the staff at the underwears company telling mom that such a thing is straight up impossible mom insists that it's the only way, the only way, <laughs> that her daughter could have gotten pregnant, and she's demanding an explanation. I'll give you an explanation. Your daughter is having sex. Unprotected sex. Well, I'm not going to criticize that. <laughs> <laughs> the underwear company is so tired of this psycho mom, they even went as far as to explain to her that the factory, that was gas, that the factory staff consisted exclusively of women and their boss has had a vasectomy <laughs> to try and convince this mom that their daughter's pregnancy had nothing to do with the company. My damn. Fruit of the womb, <laughs> as it were. Online dorks have come up with even dumber theories as to how this gal got knocked, uh, knocked up. Uh, some are saying, well, it could have happened in a public swimming pool. <laughs> no, no, that's, it's, that is absolutely not how it could have happened. No. Chlorine is great for sperm. Now, I'm going to take some of, the, some of the heat off of this story, unfortunately. I have to. After a few days, everyone found out that this mom... <sighs> is an influencer who was likely hoping to just draw more attention to herself by creating this stupid scandal. Just like a social media dork, you don't care who you hurt as long as it means people are paying attention to the most important thing in the whole world. You. You know, that sucks because the uh, influence, quote-unquote, she has might have caused a few dummies to boycott this or believe it. You know how it is like sometimes oh, you're thinking, mm -hmm. how does somebody believe that and how did a, a huge group of people believe this or that? Because, you know, there were other people that said she's just trying to get them shut down to be a, a jerk. Oh, I, the end of the story, that last bit of information that I gave you was disappointing. I, I, I really wanted to believe that this woman was that insane. And, and there are people out there, like Josh said, who are that insane, who just refuse to admit that their children have ever made a mistake, have ever been responsible for anything bad in their lives. Well, it's possible. I mean, there's mom influencers out there, right? I mean, they share their parenting styles and tips and things like that. So Definitely. She could be legit. Maybe that's why she's popular, because she thinks these wild types of things. You know the story. Uh, when I was a 10th grade kid, um, my mother... And all of the parents of our friend group had a little meeting to discuss our drinking and our partying and our 
overall degenerate behavior. <laughs> so it's my mother and it's four or five other sets of parents. And uh, they're all sitting together and they're going to try to figure out what, what is to be done with us. <laughs> and one mother, clueless as all hell, says, well, I don't know about the rest of your children. But my son is certainly not running around drinking and having sex and smoking drugs and staying out all night. My son, I don't know what you are to do with your children, but my son is not involved in that, so I don't know what I'm doing here. Clueless as hell. One other parent in the group said, um, wake up and smell the effing coffee. <laughs> <laughs> do you, so their, their son... I mean, how bad was he? Was oh, he like just, the leader of the... No, no, he was just as bad just as the as rest bad. of us. He was a smart a smart kid, good student, but he was just as much of a degenerate after hours as the rest of us. But his mother was so clueless that one other parent... I love that. Maybe you had to be there, but that line. They said, uh, Mrs. Jones, I think it's time you wake up and smell the effing coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Sports on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm better than Patrick Mahomes because of my IQ of the game. I know he's, right now, the best in the league. I know he's more accurate. I know he has all these intangibles. But when it comes to flag football, I feel like I know more than him. I love this guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's doubling down. I love this Doucette kid. I can't think of the first name. I know the last Darryl. name is. Daryl Doucette, the greatest flag football quarterback in American history. We talked about him a couple days ago. When flag football, if and when flag football becomes an Olympic sport in 2028, if the NFL lets their star players perform, this Doucette kid is saying, Patrick Mahomes, what's it, how do you say his name again? Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes isn't just going to show up and take my gig. I'm better than him at flag football. Yeah, <laughs> I, I bet he is. I bet he is. This guy's been doing it his whole life. I'm with this Doucette guy. Double D. He, and he's earned it. He's mm-hmm. friggin' earned it. Mahomes can go home and eat his stupid steak and ketchup. Let this kid go do his thing. Someone get me a Daryl Doucette t-shirt. I'm going to wear it around town. <laughs> <sighs> nice to see the Twins leave San Diego with a win yesterday, and they just pumped the Padres by a final final of 11-4. to Matty Walner hit a three-run rod in the fourth inning. That kid's got a powerful, powerful swing. I'm hoping one day he becomes one of those 35 home run, 40 Walmart. home run. Oh! Field it deep. Back it goes and gone! Three-run homer for the pride of Forest Lake. And the Twins eviscerating the baseball here. That's, it's 8 right. nothing. Kick, suck on that, Patrick Mahomes, you <laughs> sissy ass. <laughs> Uh, now they got a day off, finally a day off, and then they start up a series here at home against the St. Louis Cardinals. We've got plenty more to cover when Randy Shaver shows up in a little while, but uh, the highlight of my day is coming up next. It's Josh's News. Did you know that Standard Heating opened its doors over 90 years ago? That's right. Tony Ferreira opened the doors in 1930, now ran by his granddaughter, Claire Ferreira. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning today and experience the customer service and care that holds true today. It is savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning's state Fair specials. Deals on deals on deals that can save you thousands. Visit standardheating.com for all their state fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. Named one of the best personal finance podcasts, The Stacking Benjamin Show with Joe and his friends makes financial literacy fun. We see money inefficiency OG around us all the time. We've got a few skeletons sitting out in the open and maybe we need to broom them into the closet, if you know what I mean. Nope, take that out. What, what is... <laughs> Whatever you were going for didn't land right. Who's got a shovel and some lime? Maybe you need to do that with your financial picture. I don't know. Find out more by searching the Stacking Benjamins podcast wherever you listen. Take proper precautions and how you store things or label things properly so that this doesn't happen to anybody else or, you know, it could have been so much worse. It's not every day a toddler ends up with a higher BAC than most frat boys on a Friday night. But that's exactly what happened to a California family when their two-year-old daughter was accidentally served alcohol at a California restaurant. And that baby was wasted. Mm. Uh (laughs) Instead of apple juice, the little one got a hefty dose of house-made cooking wine. 
resulting in a tipsy tot with a 0.12 blood alcohol level and an unexpected trip to the ER. She During... wasn't driving, was she? No, no. <laughs> the uh, ambulance took her there. During a large family dinner at Fujiyama Japanese Restaurant in Salinas, California, their two-year-old daughter was accidentally served the alcohol. The parents ordered apple juice for her, but didn't realize the juice cup she'd been drinking from had house-made cooking wine inside until she started showing signs of being intoxicated. She was swaying, she was falling over, she was leaning on the walls, she couldn't hold her head up, she was slurring her words. She made out right there at the table with a really ugly toddler. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's embarrassing. The restaurant manager said the wine had been stored in a large container for some reason labeled apple juice, which led to the server's error. Police said they're looking into the matter, and the little girl has since sobered up and fully recovered. Thank so. goodness she's okay, but what a story they're going to have, right? Mm -hmm. A drunk two-year-old. Yeah, a two-year-old. <laughs> that must have been something to see. I, you guys know I've been smoking since I was two. That's when you started, right? Um, but I didn't start. That's, a, that's a, Kids are growing up fast these days, Josh. They seem to be, don't they? Mm -hmm. A Pennsylvania guy is now behind bars after attacking his neighbor because he thought the other man slept with his mom mm. late Sunday night. <laughs> He's very protective of his mother. <laughs> Cops got called to a house after a fight broke out between the two men. You had sex with my mom. The suspect, 19-year-old Henry Rugg II, apparently didn't hold back. He told police he went over to his neighbor's place because he believed the guy had something going on with his mother. When the police showed up, the victim was covered in blood. Rugg couldn't handle the idea of the guy and his mom hooking up, so first he took it out on the guy's 2004 Corvette. What the hell's wrong with this kid? The neighbor said he came outside and found Rugg standing on his car and saw some extensive damage, and then he confronted him. You tried to F my mom, oh. Rugg reportedly shouted, before jumping down and attacking him. I think I'd whisper that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't shout that in front of the whole neighborhood. Nah. In a rage, he screamed, I'm going to kill you for trying to F my mom. This kid rules. During the fight, Rugg allegedly bit off part of the guy's ear. Oh, God. He punched him in the face. He knocked out four of the guy's teeth. He even tried to bite off exactly three of his fingers. I mean, is this kid, does he want to be the one that sexually acted with his mother? Is that why he's so angry? That's the first thing that popped oh. into my head, too. Uh, oh, I mean, why, why can't your mom tear off a piece once in a while? What are you so mad about? I don't know. Maybe it's because his mom's the hot mom, and he can't deal with it anymore. Oh, he's finally snapped? Because mm -hmm. everybody wants to bang his mom? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think if I was the mom in that situation, I might even think, oh, okay, maybe we got to talk about a couple things here. That's a little odd, to say the least. My busted old ass doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. I can do what I want with it. That's what mom should say to him. A Kentucky man's been sentenced to nearly seven years in prison after faking his own death by hacking into Hawaii's death registry system in an effort to avoid paying child support. He really didn't want to pay it. <laughs> <laughs> the Department of Justice said 39-year-old Jesse Kipf illegally accessed a protective computer system, a protected computer system, using login details from an out-of-state doctor to create a fake death record for himself. He even went as far as using the doctor's digital signature and submitting a death certificate worksheet naming himself the medical examiner. But his hacking didn't stop there. He also broke into other state death registry systems, private businesses, and government networks using stolen credentials. After gaining access, he attempted to sell that information on the dark web. Oh, my goodness. Airlines have really gotten strict these days. Now, what are they doing? You're not allowed to physically threaten and intimidate a crew member. Jeez. Not allowed to do any sex stuff. You can't get drunk and throw an adult temper tantrum over politics. And now, apparently... You aren't allowed to fly if your head's bleeding from a recent hair transplant procedure. <laughs> In fact, as a 44-year-old man recently found out, it can even get you arrested. What? 44-year-old Eugenio Ernesto Hernandez Garnier is in custody after he refused to get off the plane when crew members decided he was leaking too much blood from his head. <laughs> oh, no, man. That's friggin' gross. Did your head bleed when you got your uh, hairdo, uh, Dana? During the procedure, but after that, no. It was, I mean, it was wrapped up, but there's maybe a little, a couple spots here and there, but it wasn't actively gushing like this poor dude. Didn't they, like, slice? They had to, like, slice the back of your head oh! or something? Oh. Uh, they make a very small incision, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded very defensive. Yes, it's a very <laughs> small procedure. Uh, when he uh, boarded the flight from Miami to Los Angeles, he had a bloody forehead and was wearing a dirty bandage, and the crew didn't like it. That's friggin' hilarious. They asked him to get off the plane because they were worried about him getting blood everywhere, and they also were concerned about his health. 
Instead of getting off, however, he and his wife pushed back, saying if they couldn't fly, well, then no one else can either. What the hell? Crew members warned them they'd be arrested if they didn't get off the plane, and eventually, that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately for the rest of the passengers, they ordered everyone else off the plane and had to delay that flight. That sucks. Dude looks like he just had a lobotomy, for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, it looked bad. Yeah. Oh, I mean, even bad. the bandage is half hanging off. Yeah. And oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it didn't yeah, look good. Yeah, it was good. disgusting. An accused Kenyan serial killer known as the Vampire and suspected of killing 42 women what? escaped from custody along with 12 other detainees. Oh, this is oh, not, no. not good for that neighborhood. Where, where no. is this again? This is Nairobi. Nairobi? <laughs> uh, so uh, they were at a police station in Nairobi, um, and apparently eight officers helped them escape, including some oh, station commanders. That, all sounds, that sounds pretty shady. This sounds like a whole gang. Apparently, the inmates cut through a wire mesh in their cells and scaled a perimeter wall. The escape wasn't discovered until officers who weren't in on it went to serve breakfast and found the cells empty the next day. Our early investigations suggest the escape was an inside job, as officers had been properly stationed to guard the police, uh, a police official said. The man was arrested in July after authorities found 10 mutilated bodies in a quarry. He reportedly confessed to not only killing those 10 women, but 32 others over only two years. Oh, oh my gosh. What's the his, matter with you? No. First victim, he said, was his wife, who was still missing. His wife? It's the second time in just six months a suspect in a high-profile case broke out of custody. Earlier this year, a Kenyan national accused of murdering his girlfriend in the U.S. and leaving her body in an airport parking lot also escaped a police station. He was recaptured, however, about a week later. I'm going to guess things aren't locked down all that tight in Nairobi jails. You know what I mean? You might be on Like a something. decent card trick will get you out of there. <laughs> Last Monday, a cook at the Rail 19 Bar and Grill in Lonsdale smelled something off and realized his co-worker's car was on fire in the back lot. Inside that car, his 25-year-old co-worker was unresponsive. It was filled with smoke. Apparently, he was slumped over the console. The soon-to-be hero said that earlier, the co-worker had been feeling sick and went outside for a break, but a few minutes later, he started having a medical emergency. Witnesses said his foot stayed on the accelerator, which eventually caused that car to start fire. The cook quickly opened the car doors, to let the smoke out, and shut off the engine. By the time the cops showed up, he and other co-workers had already pulled their unresponsive friend from the vehicle. He saved a life last Monday. Every time I talk about it, I get a little emotional. There could have been two fatalities. I got goosebumps just thinking about it just right now. Witnesses said the car melted like a candle, fusing into the burned-out pavement. Thankfully, the guy's now recovering after that close call. Yeah, scary moment. What Luckily, his co her co-workers must have liked him. <laughs> he saved his ass. I guess it's down in Lonsdale, you say? That's correct. I didn't know that could even happen if you just keep your foot on the gas. I, I would have no clue. Well, try it out this weekend. I will. Yeah. Like in your boyfriend's vehicle, though, not yours. You've got that <laughs> nice new vehicle. Uh, here's a random fire fact for you. In the U.S., fires are categorized into five classes. A, ordinary combustibles. B, flammable liquids slash gases. C, electrical fires. D, metals. And then they go all the way to K. Uh, they skip to K, I should say. Cooking oils and fats. Oh, those could be nasty. I had mm -hmm. no idea. A chaotic carjacking spree unfolded in St. Cloud Monday night when a drunken 35-year-old went on a rampage ramming multiple vehicles. The St. Cloud Police Department received a call just before 7 p.m. after the man crashed into a stop sign, but that was just the beginning. He went on to cause three more accidents, one of which involved him deliberately rear-ending a van driven by a 48-year-old man whom he then carjacked. The victim tried to stop the thief, but was dragged a short distance, suffering some minor injuries. The suspect took off in the stolen van, causing several more crashes before finally abandoning the vehicle and attempting to flee on foot. The cops were faster and arrested him pretty quick. In total, five cars were hit during the spree. Fortunately, however, only minor injuries were reported. Drunken mayhem in St. Cloud? That's not the town I know. It was new. Yeah, it's <laughs> new to the town. People had to explain what that even meant. <laughs> Stearns County used to be a lot more fun. <laughs> it's gotten too serious now. A high school principal in California was placed on administrative leave Monday after an awkward and inappropriate dance with the school's Viking mascot at a pep rally only three days into the new school year. Principal Robert Nunez was caught on video rolling toward the mascot in an office chair while Genuine's Pony, sexy song, 
played in the background during the 40-second clip from Friday's rally. Things got weird when the principal shot off gold confetti at the mascot, who'd been <laughs> dancing provocatively just moments before. Then he stood up face-to-face -face and traded places with the mascot in the office chair. At one point, he placed his hands on the mascot's chest, sliding his hands down, <laughs> further and further down, and then he was surrounded by students on the gym floor. What happens at this school stays at this school. The principal yelled into the mic, a spin on the famous what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas line. Well, that's, that's not true at all, I think, though, when it comes to schools. <laughs> yeah, things make the news. For example, this story. Uh, the crowd went nuts, and the principal was seen pushing the mascot out of the room on the rolling chair. They said, like, oh, he's trying to be funny, but if that's just trying to be funny, just don't be funny. <laughs> or he was trying to, like, be cool with the kids. There's people that messaged me, like, man, I thought he was good. And I'm like, he, he might be, but... Weird is weird. Over the weekend, the video quickly made its way around social media, leading to school district officials to suspend the principal while they investigate that incident. Got well, a little carried away. It's, who, it's disturbing. Who was in the mascot outfit? Uh, they don't, I'm assuming a student. They didn't mm -hmm. go on to say. Eh, trying a little too hard to be the funny, fun principal there. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's what happened. Backfired on him a little bit. A five-hour standoff in downtown L.A. ended with SWAT arresting a naked guy holding a chihuahua. The 25-year-old broke into a business, pulled a gun on the owner, then barricaded himself in a room. Crisis negotiators, along with his family members, tried to talk him down, but he was high on crystal meth and not having it. While talks fell apart, SWAT fired four <laughs> rounds of tear gas into the room. In response, the naked man set a small fire and grabbed the dog, making a break for the roof. Eventually, he gave up and surrendered. How's Pepe doing? <laughs> yeah, puppy's okay. Artificial intelligence may be smart, but apparently it can't handle a good old American accent. And among the trickiest, Minnesotan, don't you know? Hey, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Yeah. A study published last month by the language experts at Guide to Fluency uncovered the top 30 U.S. accents that turned voice recognition tech into a stuttering mess. Out of the uh, survey, 3,000 people from across the U.S., they turned out that the southern accent took first place for confusing AI the most. Right behind were New York and New Jersey accents, Texas and Bostonian accents also rounded out the top five. ChatGPT AI does have to pick up on those vernaculars because those are differences mm -hmm. that you're going to have to study in order to communicate with one another. What all of these need to do is make sure that they get enough data from all different kinds of people. Minnesotan slipped in at 13th, but the study didn't dive into what makes it so tricky. Authors say the study raises concerns about the accessibility, effectiveness, and trustworthiness of AI technologies. Well, I don't know anything about this AI thing, so, but basically what they're saying is our accent and those in the Deep South are tough to follow. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. tricky for the AI. It brings up that great story that a listener told us a few years ago about their time in the service when they were being trained to throw grenades. Um, I, I just thought this was the funniest friggin' story. He said they were trained, all of the members of this platoon or whatever you might call it, uh, they're throwing grenades. This is the day they're... And they were all trained to say, before they pull the pin and throw the grenade, they were all trained to say, I have a live grenade. Fire in the hole. Something like that. And it came time for the guy from the deep south to do it. And he said, I'm about ready to fire this here grenade. <laughs> <laughs> God. I wish I would have been there for that. <laughs> Streaming today, the third season premiere of that 90s show on Netflix and the series finale of Evil on Paramount+. Plus. Talk to us. Kristen Wiig, 51 today. You want to have sex with her? Oh, I would, sure. Mm, yeah. Very funny. <laughs> very good looking. I'd need my wife to sign off on it and Kristen Wiig to uh, be interested. I can't see either of those things happening. But Josh wants not? to have sex. You've made that very clear. Major League Baseball Hall of Famer and St. Paul native Paul Molitor, 68 today. Wow. This text says, can I get a first day of school shout out to Noah and Skyler from Worst Dad Ever Jesus. I hope your day sucks as much as I do. <laughs> That's what he said. That's awesome. Uh, congratulations to a texter getting married Saturday to someone who calls themselves Stinky Asian Fart Machine. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Can't wait, you love, uh, can't wait, love you, boo, the text goes on to say. Happy 39th to show your boobs, win a balloon, Jesus, and happy 16th anniversary to Mark and Lifeguard, Jesus. That's 93X News. Coming up next, we'll talk with Randy Shaver. 
Randy Shaver. We also recovered several gerbils inside his pants. On the half-assed morning show. Walmer, right field and deep. Back it goes and gone. Three-run homer for the pride of Forest Lake. And the Twins eviscerating the baseball here. It's 8 nothing. Did we get Randy Shaver on the telephone? Are you working on it over there? Yeah. Yep. I understand his little radio machine at work has failed him, so we'll get him on the frickin' phone here in a minute or two. He's got to be one happy guy today, as we've mentioned a few times this week. You know, today is day one of the state fair, and for the first time in 40 years, Randy Shaver doesn't have to do a damn thing about it. So aside from his uh, little beginner's radio kit that he uses at home uh, for our show. Uh, but besides, <laughs> aside from that failing on him, I bet he's pretty pumped. Hi, Randy. Good morning. Sorry about your little thing not working. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, oh, that's okay. And I'm that's sure not a sex state joke. Fair related. Uh, what'd you say? I said I'm sure it's state fair related. That oh. Yep. Uh, doesn't work this morning. You know what? You, that's got to be it. You see, unfortunately, we can only have like one thing connected. Here oh, that's at a not time. a joke. Yeah, that that's a Good point. I'm I'm 100% sure that's what it is. Now. Oh, because yeah. Got- I mean, normal. I mean, not to get too technical, but I heard everything but you guys. I heard commercials. I heard. Oh. Um, but I didn't hear you guys. Yeah, so I, I, am I heard sure- Randy too. So uh, I, that's, that's why none, none of this matters working. really. Uh, f- yeah. Th- th- but yeah, something about the way things work around here once the state fair. Anyway, uh, I, yeah, that probably angered you a little bit, but no, more than no. anything, no. like we've said a few times this week. You've got to be pretty excited. Again, day one of the fair, and it doesn't have to mean a damn thing to you. Day one of the what? <laughs> <laughs> he's, not even a, he's not even aware of what's happening. Nick. You've always what is it? What is it called? You've always <laughs> disliked making appearances at the state fair. You always have. You made that clear on this program for decades. But earlier well, I, we were. I, yes, go ahead. I was going to say. I'll, let me make it clear. I, I don't mind the fair if I'm going there for fun. Okay. But to work at the fair, I, I can't stand it. So, yeah. you're, all, you're all done. You're off the hook for life. We all I know am. that now. You're retired. Yes. Earlier, yes. we were talking about personal stories, highlights and lowlights of, uh, of, our, of, our, of time spent at the fair for each and every one of us. Mm. So as much as you disliked working there, can you come up? with a highlight or a low light. I mean, I know you've got plenty of low. Can you, there sure. had to have been one or two moments out there that were really cool, meeting someone or some experience you had out there that you enjoyed. Well, um, you know, back in the day, care wasn't in the barn. We were over, and, and I don't remember the streets, but we were up higher up in a, in a location. Mm-hmm. And that was back in the day when, you know, people watch TV, so... Oh, I remember the location not, you're talking about. Not yeah, far from yeah. where you where you are now. That's, that, that's correct. Just, and we were just up, up on the top of a hill, yes. Correct. And, you know, the crowds we would get for the newscasts, I mean, it would stop the street traffic yes. out yes. front of us. It would. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. So those are... I remember those specifically. Um you know, I loved when uh, I did a couple of stories with my son when he was working at CARE. Sure. And we did a couple of fair stories together, which was fun to do. Um, but other than that, uh, that's, that's, that's really about it. Fair enough. Like we were, we were discussing earlier, yeah. not everybody loves it. There, there's a good amount of people out there that stay away from the fair at all costs. Yeah, we got a few texts saying that. This is, that is they were for crowds or whatever it is. They're just not fans. Which shocked I mean, you, me at first. You, when you, I really, fr- you, you really have to save up money to go to the fair. The fair is not cheap. No. It is That's expensive. Out there. Like yeah. everything else, it's gone wildly up in price. There's no question yeah. about it. Years ago, it was a pretty good deal. But like a lot of things, it's, it's, it's gone. It's skyrocketed. Um and now I lost where I was going with this. Uh, I had a, a route I was going to take on the uh, topic of the fair, and I lost it. It's okay. I remember being shocked, really shocked, when I was a much younger person. The first time I met a fellow Minnesotan, and we were, were 
they were sitting in on a conversation about the state fair. And, and the first time I'm, I had a conversation with someone who just said, yeah, I got, I got no interest at all. I was shocked, but I was young and naive. Now I get it. I get why some people don't get involved. Sure. Uh, it's a big friggin' deal for others, though. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, when I you guys that, were up on that hill. Great. When you guys were up on that hill, there was a hell of a crowd that would gather uh, oh, yeah. to see you uh, folks do your thing, and you could not pass on that street. Uh, did you ever have any women pass you their phone numbers while you were? Uh... <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get flashed? No, never did. That's a letdown. Unless you count, unless you count majors pulling his shirt up in front of me. Other than that, no. <laughs> you ever go on any rides? Um, I am not a ride person, but I have gone on some rides out there uh, with my kids back when they were younger. Is there anyone amongst the six of us that really, honestly, can handle the zipper? No, nope. zero. That is, that's the one that like spins, Sling. right? Goes backwards, right? Uh, it's hard to explain. It's a rackety-looking old car, and you go upside down, and you. Okay. Oh yeah, no, oh, yeah. No, it no, looks no, like no. a belt. That is the one ride, and I've I used to be into taking amusement park rides. That's the one where I only did it once, and when I was done, I asked myself how anyone on planet Earth could enjoy that. Mm-hmm. I yeah. used to be able to do it. Now I can't do anything. The friggin' you, Tommy, sur- Tommy can't handle it. I'm, oh, hang on I'm a second. Surprised, I'm kind of surprised, Nick, that you like rides with your stomach issues that you have. But that was before... See, that's, a, that's I'm glad you asked. Someone earlier texted and said, oh, oh, I was talking about how when I was a little kid, I would hold my ones and my twosies because when I was a little kid, state fair bathrooms were just horrible. Oh, they, yeah. they, they were miserable. They were disgusting. They're glorious now compared to 35, 40, 45 years ago. So I, I made that comment that I, I would do everything I could to not use the bathrooms at the fair when I was a kid. Someone texted in and said, you able to hold it? Because, <laughs> and now, Randy, you just asked me, about my stomach issues, how I can right. handle rides, uh, my 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 joy of amusement park rides, and my ability to hold my bodily functions were strengths of mine before I became a drunk. You following what I'm saying? Yep. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Once, yeah. I, once I became a drinker, my digestive system completely changed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, those were years, long, many years ago. Those were the glory years. Yes. I did the slingshot, uh, I think it was last year, that that ride at the fair. Sure. Popular. Yeah. That was awesome. If you like adrenaline rushes, I definitely recommend doing it. See, I like that one too, Ashley, because it's just pure speed. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've never been on that one. Looks a little freaky. Didn't you go on that, Wapple? Oh, God, no. I thought <laughs> you went on one you were terrified to go on. Oh, God, no. Oh, okay. That one is just pure speed, although I will I'll warn you, give it some time between rides on the slingshot a number of years ago i did it twice in a half hour or something that was a little much oh wow but it is just pure speed a lot of fun yeah before i became a beer drinker there were a lot of things i could do the slingshot isn't that just the one where you're sitting on a hammock basically and then they uh, use a rubber band to shoot you up no 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 it's a it's a two-person car and you're you're flying on the end of a giant uh, spoke Oh. No, I'm talking about the one Josh just said. Oh, well, then I, the, the sling, okay, whatever. Yeah, I thought the slingshot was that, that okay. one where they just I'm, launch yeah, it right Yeah, it's like a bungee yeah. thing Okay, then, in the cart. And it sorry goes I blew up. What is the giant spoke, and there's a car on one end and a car on the other that fits two people? Oh, I know what you're talking about. I guess no. I don't know the name. Let me yeah, see. that's the one I'm referring to. That one looks terrifying. <laughs> In San Diego, California yesterday, it was nice that the Twins got one on their way out of town, and they made a hell of a lot of noise on the way out. They put together a seven-run fourth inning, found themselves up 10-0 after five innings, ended up beating the San Diego Padres 11-4. Yeah, they pounded Matt Waldron yesterday. Hey, here's the thing. uh, I didn't realize... I didn't realize going into yesterday's game that the Padres starter, you just said his name, a kid called Matt Waldron. I didn't realize that he threw a knuckleball. Oh, I didn't realize that either. Yeah. yeah. They were talking about it a lot on the broadcast yesterday. And now I wasn't able to pay close attention to the game. It was kind of on in the background for me. He didn't throw a lot of them, but he did throw a knuckleball. 
I just wanted well, to even even mixing your pitching uh, repertoire with a knuckleball. When you're used to seeing someone throw 95 in a fastball, and then they throw a knuckler that's probably 68, <laughs> that will that can throw your timing off quite a bit, especially if you're good at it. Yes, mm-hmm. and and it's always fun to watch. So that was. Part of the fun yesterday for me watching the game is you, you just don't see knuckleball pitchers anymore. And the dude, yeah. he, he mixed one in now and again. Uh, it didn't work too well for him. Twins cracked off 18 hits on the day. They made it pretty easy for their starter, Simeon Woods Richardson. So they busted up their three-game losing streak. Yep. They finally get a day off. They start a series Travel here in day. town. Yeah, I guess it's, well, I love the Saturday matchup. Who is Sonny it? Gray and Pablo Lopez. Oh, see, that's great. Mm. Cardinals are in town this weekend. So they start a series Fun. here in town against the St. Louis Cardinals tomorrow night. So that's how you go into a day off, Randy Shaver. You pile up some runs, you win. Yes, you do. And then you're and, able to go and out. Cleveland loses. Cleveland so you loses. gain a game. So you're back within two and a half. So it's all good. Get a win, and then you're able to go out and get as drunk as you've ever been in your entire life. And it's the first state fair weekend. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. Than mm-hmm. that. What is this? Did you see this, Josh? Oh, God. Uh, the slingshot ride, whatever that is. Um, that's the thing about county fair and state fair rides. Um, you, you, they're all named something different compared on where you are. Uh, you know, so I, whatever the slingshot ride is, Josh, it says here there's a website dedicated to asses popping out of pants during the slingshot ride. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. I saw a couple of wardrobe malfunctions on some videos before. <laughs> Tube tops, not the best to wear on that no. ride. No, or the videos of people getting so scared that they like pass out. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. The best ones are the ones where they pass out, come to, freak out, and pass out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, by the way, the ride you're talking about, according to Vacation Jesus, Nick, that's called the Bitch Coaster, he said. Oh, no. Yeah, that's the Bitch Coaster. I rode the Bitch Coaster twice in a half hour. Oh. I was going to say, I was surprised you'd go on the slingshot. It doesn't seem like something you'd do. Yeah. Well, but didn't we just establish that it's not called the slingshot? That's what I'm saying. Like, with the, when you oh, said oh, you oh. went on it, that surprised me. Yeah. It didn't seem like one you'd go they on. They fling you across the fair like you're a bug or something. No, 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 no. The, well, Someone will come up with the name of that thing. Some people are saying Sky Ride. I, I, don't, I no. didn't think that's what it was called. Skyscraper? No. Uh, that's it. That's Skyscraper. It. That's it. Skyscraper. That's 100% it's it. It's like a giant bicycle spoke, yep. a car on one end, a car on the other that seats two people. Now I can picture it perfectly. Yep. Yes. Oh, uh, so we mentioned the Twins are playing St. Louis next. I got to tell my St. Louis Cardinals story. Now, I don't remember who told me this story. But they swear it's true. Uh, The very first game at Target Field was an exhibition game against the St. Louis Cardinals. Yep. And whoever told me this story, this is the way they said it all broke down. They said after that game, they were drinking at Liquor Lyles. Great place. Is that place still going? No. No, it's not. They closed her down a while ago, right? Yeah, during the Mm -hmm. pandemic. That's where my parents had their first date, just for the record. Nice. At Liquor Lyles. And I used to... Pardon me? So that's romantic. I used to frequent that place quite a bit. That was fun. I dated a gal who lived in the neighborhood for a few years, and we went to Liquor Lyles all the friggin' time. Uh, so this is the story that was told to me. Uh, that particular night, the very first ball game at Target Field, an exhibition game against the St. Louis Cardinals. A guy says he was drinking at Liquor Lyles, and there was a St. Louis Cardinals fan at the bar, and he's wearing all his Cardinals gear. And the guy starts to get drunk. And he starts to tell everyone at the bar that, you know, Minneapolis isn't a real baseball town. St. Louis is. Minneapolis is not. And he's giving all these reasons why St. Louis is the premier baseball city and their history. And and then, of course, he brings up the 87 World Series. It was a friggin' fluke. If if, uh, you didn't have the stupid old Metrodome, you never would have won that series. Whitey Herzog and the Cardinals in 87 were the superior team. If Jack Clark hadn't been injured, they would have won. So the guy's running his mouth about how superior St. Louis and their baseball team is to Minneapolis and their baseball team. And the crowd is saying, you know, the crowd at Liquor Lows, shut up. You know, it wasn't terribly mean-spirited, but it's okay, enough, pal. Shut up. Have another drink. It's starting to get a little squirrely in the bar. And 
The story was told to me where the guy then said, I'll prove to you that none of you is no dick about baseball. I got 100 bucks right here. I bet there's not one person in this bar who can tell me the starting lineup for the Twins for Game 7 of the 1987 World Series between the Twins and Cardinals. 100 bucks if anyone in this bar can name the Twins, your, your own team's starting lineup that night. Dan Gladden stands up in the bar and says, I'll take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I can picture Dan Gladden hanging out with Liquor Lyles, too. <laughs> Again, that's just, uh, dude sold it to me. He said he was there. I don't know. I saw a video last night. Apparently, a couple of douchebags got into a fist fight at the Twins-Padres game on Tuesday night. Now, it didn't look like a Twins fan versus a Padres fan or anything fun like that. Just a couple of San Diegans who haven't grown up yet. Did you guys see this uh, yeah, scrap? It's on yeah, NightRex.com. Mm -hmm. You don't see him too much at baseball games. It's more of an NFL thing. Yeah. I want to see something like that in person. That'd be fun. You, why, I'm surprised you haven't been involved in something like that. <laughs> You're talking about you've never seen a fist fight in person? In, uh, one at a sporting event. Oh. Uh, one dude got his word hole bloodied up quite nicely. Fan in a black shirt landed a series of blows to a dude wearing a white wife beater. The dude in the white wife beater was settled down a little bit when his hot girlfriend got a hold of him. Girlfriend. Oh, she was hot. Did you see his girlfriend? Oh, I saw his girlfriend. <laughs> she was embarrassed. He looked like the kind of guy who starts trouble a lot. Which I bet his hot girlfriend is getting tired of. But she's young. She doesn't get it yet. They say the guy and the wife beater taunted the other fan and got what he deserved. Maybe you want to check that out on 93x.com. Uh, you never had to throw down at a ball game, Randy Shaver? Uh, no, I did not. No? Um, I was always the peacemaker. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, why don't we go start trouble at a, at a pigs game or something this winter? You don't Are have you to... inviting me? Yeah. And you don't, have no. to, you don't have to worry about your image or anything. No one cares about you anymore. You're not on television anymore. <laughs> You're right. No one does care about me. You grow a beard and you tune up the big guy. I'll, I'll take the little guy and we'll uh, be legends that <laughs> night. <laughs> grow a beard so no one can say, hey, wasn't that that TV guy? They wouldn't know you if you grew a beard. Andy said there was a big fight at his beer league softball game last night over an infield fly, and he just sat and ate his popcorn watching. Yeah. <laughs> over you, an infield you, fly. You, you couldn't get me off the bench to join a fight at a beer league softball game. <laughs> uh, all right, they're about to get arrested. That means more beer for me. Perfect. <laughs> uh, you know, sports websites love to pull this gimmick out their ass every couple of months or so. Randy Shaver, Bleacher Report. What did they set up here? They've got every big league franchise's Mount Rushmore. God, I'm so tired of that. They, people just, like I said, sports websites, are, they love to bust out this Mount Rushmore gimmick, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Every big league franchise's Mount Rushmore of starting pitchers since the year 1990. So go ahead, Randy Shaver. Who is on the Twins' Mount Rushmore? For pitchers? Pitchers, pitchers, starting pitchers since 1990. Well, oh, since 90. Yes. Well, it had to be, have to be Bly Levin. No, no, he wasn't with the Twins beyond 1990. Well, no, you're right. He yeah. was 87. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hmm. Uh, Brad, Brad Radke. Yes. Santana. Yes. Probably... Liriano? No, he was interesting. It, it was interesting that he was left off the list. Uh, they had like a toughest omission. They in, did. At the end where they'd throw a few pitchers on there. He made that. They did. There's two more. I'll give you a hint. If I feel like King Kong, I'm going to pitch like King Kong. Or I'm going to try to anyway. Who made that quote before Game 7 of the 1991 World Series? Uh, Jack Morris. That's right. And the other is a guy that you love to uh, see at your golf tournament. Uh, Kevin Tappany? That's right. Mm. And I'm so happy they put Kevin Tappany in there. Yeah. I love Kevin Tappany. I know his numbers weren't outrageous, but he was just a solid inning eater. Couldn't you argue Aguilera in there, too? With starting pitchers. 
Oh, starting pitch. I'm sorry. I'm starting I to get old. That. Okay. <laughs> That's right. I love that they put Kevin Tappany in there. A lot like Radke. You know, they, they didn't blow you away with their numbers, but they you right. just get all you get almost bet your friggin' life that they were gonna right. go seven or eight. And so then again, that, that was from an era when managers were allowing right. pitchers to go. Yes, Randy, right. go ahead. So what so what does that tell you about the current state of pitching for the twins when none of those guys are even Remotely close to like right now. Well, there's only one from recent years that made their, as Josh mentioned, their notable omissions list. There's only one from recent twin seasons. Yeah. And that's Jose Barrios. Mm. And, and yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I, I'm not so sure. I, I don't know if he had as many years of success as you would as you would require to make a list like that. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, but that's a perfect example of where we are right now when we watch Twins pitching. Now, you know, if you did this survey 10 years from now, m- maybe a Bailey Ober or you talk about, you know, someone Pablo? like that. Maybe but if Pablo gets back to his form. That we Pablo, yeah. yeah. I mean, Pablo would have to do it for a few more years yeah. consistently to make that list. The other Sonny honorable Gray, Sonny Gray, Sonny Gray was was a little bit too old to to hang around long enough to be on that kind of list. So, but I mean, again, that it just goes to show you the current state of Twins pitching. When, well, pitching all over the big leagues, really. Well, but you could argue that there are pitchers out there that are pitching for certain teams that would make their Mount Rushmore, like. You know, Clayton Kershaw. He's well, I mean, there's the some Dodgers. rare exceptions, like Kershaw Verlander. and Verlander. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I just... But, that, but, yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. I mean, Twins pitching is just has not... No. Overall, lately. though, starting pitching, starting pitchers are not given the opportunity that they used to be given. And that, I think, factors in as well. The, well, uh, the, uh, the other uh, – let, let me get through this. The other – what's the yeah. word I'm looking for? I had it three times. Honorable wanna, mention? Honorable mentions. Thank you. The other honorable mentions. Starting pitchers. I, people are texting in. What about Joe Nathan? It's starting friggin' pitchers. Uh, the yeah. other starting pitchers with honorable mentions. Scott Baker, which kind of shocked me. Yeah, Scott Baker actually was consistent. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was wasn't right. great, but he was consistent. Scott Erickson. And Francisco yeah, Liriano. This wasn't wasn't around long enough. I don't think Erickson. Yeah. Can you find this Wapple? Can you get on the uh, godless and soulless internet and find out what was the derogatory nickname that Chris Jericho gave Scott Erickson uh, in Chris Jericho's autobiography? Because you know they hated each other. Did you know this Wapple? No. Do you even know who Scott Erickson is? No, I don't okay. think so. He was a stud pitcher for the Twins in the in the early '90s. Oh, you were, right. you're not aware of this? I thought maybe you, you had read Chris Jericho's autobiography. No, not yet. It's hilarious if you're an older Twins fan. Uh, Jericho was dating a woman who had a girlfriend, and that girlfriend was dating Scott Erickson. And this is in the mid '90s when Erickson, I think, was pitching for the Baltimore Orioles. And Jericho just hated Scott Erickson. He thought he was just the most arrogant ass he had ever met. And so he gave him a derogatory nickname. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Most of you, though, as usual, are completely lost when I'm talking. Well, if you're saying, if you're saying that Scott Erickson was arrogant, I'll agree with that. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So far, all I found is when he's describing his book, Chris Jericho's describing the book, he says... Uh, there's in the book you'll find the epic douchebaggery of pitcher Scott Erickson and the debauchery with guitar player Zach Wilde. Uh, yeah, if you someone I'm trying to find yeah, don't hurt yourself, but I swear to God, <laughs> what the hell is that? I swear to God, in Jericho's autobiography, he had a specific nickname for Erickson, like ass hat or ass bag or something. He would say, you know, me and my girlfriend went out on a double date with ass bag. I remember uh, seeing Scott Erickson at, uh, <laughs> I mean, you got to be, you got to be pretty full of yourself. If this is your wardrobe, it was uh, Lord Fletcher's on Lake Minnetonka back when he was a stud pitcher for the Twins, and he had the tiniest little spandex shorts on. Oh, my God. It looked like he was going to compete on American Gladiator. It was just a t- <laughs> And I, there were black little tiny spandex shorts, and they had little skulls and crossbones on them. Oh, man. 
Just I, it stuck out like a, like a. Uh, yeah. So there you go, the Mount Rushmore of twin starting yeah. pitchers. I love talking about those old timers. Uh, speaking of old timers, longtime Cincinnati Red Joey Votto has officially retired. Yeah. People are telling me that he referred to Scott. Seventeen years. I mean, he, he played a long time. Yes, he did. For sure. Back to Jericho. Um, oh, oh, oh! Someone's guessing that the term for Scott Erickson was "ass clown." I don't think that was it because is it Sammy Badweeds? No, because I'm, I'm looking at an excerpt and he calls him Sammy Badweeds. Okay, I'll have to go along with it. That must have been it. Anyway, Joey Votto. You know, he signed a minor league deal with the Blue Jays before the season started. Right. Trying to keep his big league career going after what? 17 years, you said, with the uh, Cincinnati yeah, Reds. Yeah, 17 years in the bigs. Yeah. In spring training, he stepped on a bat in the dugout and snapped his ankle. He was trying to come back, but it wasn't working. So he just said, you know yeah. what? F it. Six time All Star, 2000 plus 10 NL MVP is how you say it. And uh, a lot of folks say, Send him into the hall. Well, you know, I mean, he's got, I'm just looking at some of his numbers, 2,100 hits. He had a lifetime 294 batting average. That's pretty damn good. That is damn good. I don't know what his, I don't, the the stats I'm looking at right now doesn't list his, well, maybe I can look at this one, list his number of home runs because he was a home run hitter. Well, he had 356 home runs. I mean, that's a pretty good number. That's a healthy number. Mm-hmm. I suppose there were, he will certainly get some consideration. That's for sure. Oh, I think so. I really yeah, do. Yeah, it's a long career. Speaking of the season. Multiple now. All-Star, uh, league MVP, uh, or at least in the voting MVP. Yeah. If personality does anything for you, Joey Votto has a very funny... Yep. Very uh, outgoing and fun personality. And you know what else, Josh? He humble. He humble. Mm-hmm. He, uh, like he was a very good, amb- very good ambassador for the game. Mm-hmm. He tweeted last night. He said he was taking an Uber to the stadium. And the driver said, are you a player? And he goes, nope. <laughs> yep. I saw that. that now he can start saying, no, I am not. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of the Cincinnati Reds, Ellie De La Cruz. Last night, yesterday, became just the fifth player in big league history to ever steal 60 bases and hit 20 home runs in a single season. Only there he goes. Hits. The pitch is down. The throw down is offline. Ellie De La Cruz takes third base. And that is a monumental steal. That's his 60th swipe of the season. I have to be honest. I... During the drafts for fantasy baseball, I oh. passed on that guy. I can't tell you how many times because I was so turned away from his batting average from a year ago. He was barely a 220, 230 hitter. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what? The guy's kind of a flash. He's not a flash. He's a stud. He's so good. That was so stupid. He's, He's only really 22. a good player. He can get, I absolutely He's a really love good player. Guy. He's so much fun to but watch. But you know too. what, though? I mean, I looked at, I looked at his... I looked at him. I, I mean, Corbin Carroll had a great year last year with Arizona, and he has struggled all season long with the Diamondbacks. He's barely hitting 215 and has just not been the same player. And I kind of thought, well, I wonder if Cruz is going to be kind of in that same mold. But, man, what a breakout to, to have the kind of numbers that you just said. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So. He's the fifth player in big league history to steal 60 bases and hit 20 dongs in a single season. Uh, there are two other former Cincinnati Reds who accomplished that. Randy Shaver, you want to take a stab at that? Joe Morgan. Right. Uh, Pete Rose. No, that's a great guess. This guy was uh, an outfielder. Power Foster. Hitter. Not George Foster. Uh, George Foster. I think more 80s and 90s. Uh... Parker? He, no, not to, He was tight friends with Durrell Strawberry. He and Durrell Strawberry were always partnering around. Um, I'll go ahead. You got me. Eric Davis. Oh, Eric Davis. Oh, gosh, yeah. The other two, Ronald Acuna Jr., accomplished yep. 60. He just did that last year, I think. Uh, one or two years ago. 
Ricky Henderson did it three times mm-hmm. in his career. Oh, yep. yeah. I'm surprised and he I'll only you, did that three times. Yeah. Yep. And, I'll, and I'll bet you you could take that category to another level with Ricky Henderson and say that his 20-plus home runs were leadoff home runs. Oh, yeah. So that would take that to a whole different level of, you know, uh, statistics when you can say that your home run numbers are leadoff home runs. Yeah, Ricky was uh, the best in the business at that. Don't worry, Ricky, you're still the best. (laughs) You guys remember... Well, if you don't remember the Scott Erickson thing, then you, Randy Shaver, you remember when Ricky Henderson would hit a leadoff rod? He would kind of check himself out before he ran the bases to see if he was sexy enough. Do you remember that? <laughs> he would swing, the ball would yeah. travel. He he knew it was gone, and he would kind of, he would kind of straighten his uniform out like, if I'm gonna round the bases, I'm gonna look good doing it. Remember that, Ricky? Right. He was, right. He was so cool. Who's the guy that did the wing flap when he ran the bases and got? <laughs> he, he, I think they plunked him the next time he came to the plate. Was it? I want, was it Joe Carter? It wasn't. Maybe it wasn't Joe Carter. Uh, I can picture it. And and I there was a guy who did like a wing you flap. You might be he right. Like dropped, he dropped like his shoulder after he hit a big home run, and it just caused all sorts of controversy. Ah, I can and I can't remember the name of the guy. You might be right, Joe Carter, but he was such a nice guy. I, I can't see Yeah, him. I don't know if it was Joe Carter. At any rate, well, this is a cute video. Did we put this up on 93x.com, what the Oakland Athletics players were doing at the ballpark the other day, Randy being a degenerate uh, fantasy sports? I saw this. <laughs> being a degenerate game. They're deciding the draft order for their football draft? Yes. Yep. So yes. the Athletics <laughs> players went to the upper deck at Oakland Coliseum, and they threw baseballs with their names on them from the upper deck at a small target on the field closest to the pin decided their fantasy football draft order. That was kind of fun to watch. It was fun. It looks like fun. That would be that'd be. Kind of reminded me of the old uh, Metrodome when they do the paper airplanes into uh, the back of the mm-hmm. truck. Yeah. They park the truck in the outfield, and then everybody would have, like, you know, paper airplanes to fly, and if you landed it in there, you got the truck or something like that? Uh, well, here's the deal. I mean, they didn't need to have a getaway. Uh, that, that's not the proper word. They didn't need to have a giveaway for people to fold up paper at the old Metrodome mm-hmm. and try no, to throw it no, in. That, no. was some, that was Sometimes it was the largest pop you heard from the crowd <laughs> yeah. all night yep. when someone's right. paper airplane would reach midfield or center field. That or the beach ball. The beach balls, yes. The beach ball is up in the upper deck on student night on Wednesdays. Randy Shaver, yep. the all-knowing brotherhood. They're always here for us. If we don't know something or another, they do. Jeffrey Leonard. Jeff Leonard of the San yep, Francisco Giants. I just Giants. thought of it right now. Jeffrey Leonard, the wing flap, San Francisco Giants. I love our friggin' crowd out there. They're always able to. Uh... So it says here, judging by the re- reaction of Scott Alexander of the Oakland Athletics, he landed the number one overall pick amongst the team. And <laughs> and tell me if you agree with this, Randy Shaver, being the degenerate fantasy sports player that you are. Sure. So getting the number one pick, it says here, gives Scott Alexander the opportunity to draft Christian McCaffrey. I would do that. And, okay. I, and I have done that so far. I just think that he – this is the year for – just off the beaten path for one second. This is the year to draft receivers. Do not draft maybe McCaffrey, maybe Brees Hall, B. John Robinson later, but draft receivers okay. because the, the, the direction of fantasy football has changed because of how running backs are viewed now in the league. So the idea now, and I get this from my buddy Paul Charchian, who's an expert at this. Uh, here we go. The idea now is get receivers. Get them in the first three rounds, and then because there's enough running back depth from teams because they don't use the running back like they used to, no. that you will be able to get backs later in the draft. So that's been my kind of philosophy, except if I have the number one pick. I will take McCaffrey because he does okay. so many things. Not only score from the ground, but he can catch the ball and if he's healthy. So. I hear he's completely hairless, Josh. Oh, oh wow. I did not oh. Know. Hmm. Christian McCaffrey. Kind of like a chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> completely hairless from head to toe.
Christian Mika. Uh, you know, we were discussing home run hitters, and some of them have had some odd little celebrations, I guess. And now you see the bat flip and all that stuff. But back in the day, every once in a while, a player had an odd little, what's the word I'm looking for, routine that they would go for or go through when they'd hit a home run. Uh, one listener is informing us that there was a player back in the day, well, not that long ago. I never noticed this. He would hold up his arm when he rounded the bases, Josh, um, because his arm was a perch for his imaginary parrot that sat on him as he ran the bases. <laughs> That's oh, wow. That sounds like a wrestling gimmick. Uh-huh. That's great. And they, they have the name of the player who used to go through that routine, and I remember this guy. I don't remember him doing that. Okay, hold up his arm for his imaginary parrot that would sit on his – and that player – Encarnacion! 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 Edwin! <laughs> Encarnacion! I, I, I've seen a bunch of videos of him hitting home runs and he's doing it. Did, I never yeah. noticed it. And then. <laughs> There's some other videos, and people are putting actual parrots and stuff on his arm. <laughs> That's They're funny. I never knew the man the had an – I always wanted to play him to play for the Twins so we could – so Target Field could play that song. You got an Aussie girl. <laughs> I never noticed the parrot gimmick. Boy, I'll tell you what. If you want to watch a movie where one character is in love with the other, watch Nacho Libre. <laughs> he is so in love with Encarnacion. Yep. And she's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Was she not? Oh, yeah. Sad part in that movie, though, was when he found out that friggin' uh, what the hell was that guy's name? Uh, the wrestler that he idolized. Ramses? Yes. Yep. I hate the part when he finds out that Ramses is a real douche. <laughs> <laughs> You guys see how this Dolphins head coach, Mike McDaniel, is coming off these days? This is yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen, like, where they have year to year uh-huh. his transformation? That's pretty fun. We were just talking about him the other day with his capri pants and his vape rod yeah. and his uh... – So, when he first started coaching the Miami Dolphin a number of years ago, the folks say – he looked like a Best Buy employee, uh, employee is how you say it. He had his little collared dolphin shirt and his hair was perfectly combed and his khaki pants. Now they say, a lot of folks are saying he showed up at a press conference the other day and people are noting his transformation. And they're saying now he looks like a South Beach cocaine kingpin. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> looks he like does. Yeah, cold. the tan, that hair. That was the best description I saw. Mm-hmm. He's got a scraggly beard. He's got a curly hairdo. He's wearing blue blockers. Yeah, that really puts it all together. <laughs> they say he spent too much time hanging around South Beach, Miami, and he's starting to look like the locals. It's not, not as dramatic, but it kind of reminds me you probably have seen those Brent Burns transformations over oh, the years. The, uh-huh. the ones where they yeah. go year to year to year. It's incredible, the difference. Is he still doing the mega beard thing, Brent Burns? I, I believe know. he is. It's time to grow up. Randy said. And get a big boy haircut. And, and, and facial haircut. Oh, that's, yeah, he's still what, got the beard. That's what Randy said, and I agree with him. Yeah, he's got the beard, and then when he smiles, he has, like, the first three teeth out, too, in every photo. <laughs> Enough with the Captain Caveman thing. Well, they're calling him a uh, – the NHL, if I remember right, their official Twitter account called him a Wookiee, and they were saying he, was the, <laughs> he transformed into a Wookiee from Star Wars. That's good. Oh, funny. But it's funny. You see, he's, like, the world's most handsome guy, you know, just like a pretty boy, and then he turns into that. God help us, Cubby. Get my puke bucket ready. Get my puke bucket and get my heart medication. Travis Kelsey has landed his first movie role. <laughs> oh, my God. It's going to be in a couple. Yep. Uh... I'm not going to make it. He's going to be in a buddy cop comedy. 
By the way, did you see, speaking of facial hair, did you see that he has shaved his face down to where now he only has a mustache? Oh, God, it's hilarious. (laughs) Anyway, this movie is apparently going to be called This is So Bad, isn't it, Josh? (laughs) Randy Shaver. Are you okay? Have you given up? I wouldn't blame you if you just walked away from this story. Oh, I, yeah, I I could care less about Travis Kelsey, but go ahead. Okay. The movie is going to be called Cannons because he and his cop buddy, both of them, they're a couple of loose cannons. Oh, that's so stupid. It hurts. No. (laughs) (laughs) It's directed by the guy who directed John Wick. I don't care. I I don't care. Do we know who the buddy is along with him? Uh, Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be Gronk. (laughs) <laughs> Can you imagine? It's going to be, uh, what's his nuts? Uh, Rex Ryan. He's uh, going to be on a new FX series from Ryan Murphy. What, is, what does it mean to be from Ryan Murphy? Does that mean uh, Ryan anything Ryan Murphy, to... he's uh, like a well-respected, he came up with, um, oh my God, is American she... Horror Story, right? Or, mm-hmm. or no, America, um, is that what it's called? Uh, um, my Amer- brain's not working. Uh, American uh, um, Pie. American Pie, no. Really? Oh. Uh, it's a new uh, show called Grotesque. American Werewolf in London. Not, yeah, not that he either. did uh, American Horror Story. American Horror Story. Oh, okay. yep. Yeah, people love that guy. He's going to be in the new uh, uh, Happy Gilmore. Do you know yeah. Travis yeah. Kelsey oh, really yes, wants yes. to be part of this? Yes, yes, yes. He, Let's he, talk he, about he it. Was, yes, yes, yes. Travis has been, he mentioned it, and so we have a nice something for Travis. He's going to come by and... And he's cool, very nice guy. You guys would love him in real life. What a big, handsome guy. And yeah. What, <laughs> funny, yeah. Cool as what was I just hearing? Do you already have tickets. He's going to be in the... Adam Happy Sandler. Game. Yeah. That was Adam Sandler? Yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. Talking about Travis Kelsey. He's yeah. He's going to be in a, a new... And Happy Gilmore. Two of your favorite people. So the movie Cannons, Randy Shaver. Here's the description of the movie. In Cannons, two loose cannons are forced to partner up. No one wants to work with these two cops, and they end up taking the cases that no one else can. Oh, I would hate to be their boss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you just can't wrangle those two. I guess they'll be in the boss's office a lot, yep. slamming the door. I yep. just can't do it. Can't do it. You guys don't get. You guys don't play by the books, but damn, well, you get results. Like <laughs> I'm so that disgusted. sounds like more than a bit role. That sounds like he's like a main character. I I'm disgusted. Well, oh, are you yeah. familiar with his catchphrase? He's been saying his catchphrase a lot. Uh, you, Travis Kelsey has a catchphrase? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I'm not familiar. Here's a little compilation. All right now. 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 Uh, That's his catchphrase. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Happy Gilmore, uh, Adam Sandler's on the Dan Patrick show a while back talking about Happy Gilmore too, and he revealed that when they handed him the script to the studio for the original they liked it but they said we got one note we think you should call it hole in fun (laughs) that's so bad (laughs) it's so awful i want no part of this (laughs) did you like happy gilmore nick i know you're not a sandler fan not really no i thought i loved that movie it's so good it's a good movie yeah, I thought that was so good, too. Yeah, in the hole. Didn't like it. I had to hit it off of Frankenstein's back foot. <laughs> he was almost as bad as playing a hockey player as friggin' Rob Lowe in Youngblood. <laughs> Happy birthday to Sister Jean. Does everyone remember Sister Jean? 105. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, she's a neat lady. A number of years ago. Wow. How many years ago was that? Uh, for Christ's sake. 20 plus 18. Loyola, Chicago. In the yeah. NCAA men's basketball tournament, had that miraculous run to the Final Four. Everyone grew to love this nun. Is she, she a nun? Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. By the name yeah. of Sister Jean. She was no friggin' spring chicken back in uh, 20 plus 18. Just recently, she celebrated her 105th birthday. And she's still uh, whooping a llama's ass, according to uh, the story. She's still uh, spry and. Doing her thing. 105. Wow. She threw out the first pitch at Wrigley last year on her 104th birthday. Son of a bastard. 105. I'm glad that she's still doing well because most folks at 105, 
are not. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. It's a long time to be on planet Earth, Randy Shaver. All right, there you go. We got to get going. Uh, Randy Shaver, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning. It'll be Friday. It's going to be a massive F off day tomorrow. Okay. I'm all, I'm all in for an F off day. Yeah, don't prepare a damn thing. <laughs> I never do. <laughs> <laughs> You know, last time I said especially, that. Especially now. I'm retired. Last time I said that about you, you got really mad at me. Uh, all right, Randy, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. We'll be back in a few minutes on the half Ass Morning Show. Did you know that Standard Heating opened its doors over 90 years ago? That's right. Tony Ferreira opened the doors in 1930. Now ran by his granddaughter, Claire Ferreira. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning today and experience the customer service and care that holds true today. It is savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning's State Fair Specials. Deals on deals on deals that can save you thousands. Visit StandardHeating.com for all their State Fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. When you have sports mixed with your pop culture, along with humor and celebrity interviews, your earbuds are enjoying The Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, Bruce Feldman, the Big 12 landscape. I just know how Dion is, where he's coming from. His wins are measured differently. The question is, as you said, it's got to go from four to eight. I think they can do that. It, it would be hard not to get better considering how bad they were on the offensive line last year. Now, their schedule is actually feels harder this year than it was last year. Search for The Rich Eisen Show on YouTube or wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, is that all the things I get for the day of hot sex? I'll tell you what, I gotta be honest, I didn't think we'd make it, but here we <laughs> sat at 8.32 on the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show, and we thank you for listening. We appreciate that. Cubby, light of my life. How's it going over there, son? So far, so good. I you know, actually predicted we'd make it. You did? Yeah, not to disagree, but I thought we'd make it. Next time, let me know that you have a positive <laughs> vibe, because I've been thinking this entire time we're not going to... Uh, you know, a few minutes ago, we were talking about motion pictures, weren't we? We were talking about this and that. I saw an ad the other day. I think it was just on the soulless internet. I don't think it was a television ad. I think it was... And when I saw the ad, I thought to myself, this is something that probably has Josh's uh, little fly going up and down like a window shade. I saw an ad for Beetlejuice Part 2. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. I, as a matter of fact, it inspired me. I went to uh, one of the pop-up Halloween shops <laughs> and nearly bought every... Well, I, I didn't buy anything, but I nearly did buy every single thing they had related to Beetlejuice. You've got a sick new Halloween obsession. Oh, I do. It's, it, there's a problem. I love it. You've got a sick new obsession. You buy everything Halloween related, yeah. and then you dump it in your yard starting in mid-September all the way through Halloween. I, uh, well, we uh, I'll tell you, my wife and I had to have a talk because I'm like, we need to move so we can get a bigger yard to put all of our uh, Halloween stuff in it. Yeah. We're running out of yard space. Is she questioning all the money that you're spending on Halloween decorations? Uh, she's the worst at that because she'll never say anything about it. But she, like, I need sometimes her to say stop buying Halloween decorations. But she loves it, too. If she ever gets on your ass about how much money you spend for Halloween, all you got to do is turn it around and say, look how much money she spends on beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, for her, it's potions and, like, uh powders and all kinds of whatever. She's a necromancer when it comes to all this health stuff. She can drink a case of beer. In like a two, two, three hours, uh, Josh's wife. Dang, that's impressive. So Beetlejuice Part 2, does this come out into the movie theaters? Is it one of these gimmicks yeah. where you have? Okay. No, it'll be in, in theaters. Michael Keaton. See, now, personally, Beetlejuice, never saw it. But I am an old school Michael Keaton fan. Um, I Personally, I want to see Johnny Dangerously Part 2. But uh, that's probably not going to happen. But Michael Keaton is so underrated as a comedy actor. When he first started out, he did comedies like uh, Night Shift with Henry Winkler and Johnny Friggin' Dangerously and others that I can't think. Mr. Mom, which I didn't really enjoy. But part of the reason why I uh, enjoyed the movie The Other Guys with uh, Mark Wahlberg and uh, what's his name? Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Michael Keaton really shows off how funny he still can be in that movie. Oh, he was great in that movie. Yep. So I'm happy Just for how him. clueless he was, and he's yes. making all the TLC references and doesn't get it. <laughs> uh, he is brilliant, and I'm happy for him. I'm not a Beetlejuice guy, and I, and I, I likely will never watch Beetlejuice Part 2, but I just, 
I'm such a Michael Keaton fan. I'm, I'm glad that he's, you know, get a big fat paycheck, whatever, have some fun with Beetlejuice. I was reading I'm some fat. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm super excited for it because uh, Jenna Ortega is in it. Oh, sure. She's great. She'll be perfect in that. Oh, that's for definitely. Sure. Uh, she's like the Winona Ryder of the new one. So uh, I was reading a bunch of facts about the original, now with the new one coming out. And I never heard this. Maybe this is very common. So the movie's, the original's 92 minutes long. And Beetlejuice is only in it for 17.5 minutes. I never, what? never would have guessed that. I hear you. I oh. hear you. All right. Also, uh, this morning we were talking about, of course, the Minnesota State Fair. Today is day one. Uh, we'll give you, I guess, uh, one more reminder this morning that this year morning show will be out at the 93X booth tomorrow from 10 to noon. Stop by if he's got a few minutes. Buy something and then get away from us. Uh, we'll be out there tomorrow from 10 to noon My and God. the following Friday from 10 to noon. Did I, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> that was very cruel. And that's not how I think we feel at all. What about See, multiple? that's my attitude. That's not the collective attitude. No, of the, no, that's oh, your all attitude. All right, that, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> what about Multiplicity? Did you like that movie? Never saw it. I enjoyed oh, that one. Oh, God, that was funny. Never, ever saw it. There's a whole bunch of Michael Keatons in that one. Uh, that's, yeah. what I, yeah, that's what I friggin' heard. <laughs> so we were talking about the State Fair. We got into a, a conversation about our lifetime highlights and lowlights of visiting the fair. I just wanted to read you one more um, take on a highlight or a low light from going on over to the Minnesota State Fair. Uh, here's somebody who said, uh, I was at the fair. What a lucky bastard this uh, individual uh, is or was, I guess. I was at the fair with some friends when I was 19. My friend found an ID, I guess on the ground or something, that an ID of a 24-year-old guy who looked like me. So they're 19 years old. They find someone's friggin' ID on the ground of a 24-year-old that looks just like one of the 19-year-olds. Uh, this individual said, that night, we got wasted. <laughs> <laughs> you talk talk about, about a friggin' stroke of luck. Yeah, the universe is just aligning right there. Come on. Did that really happen? We got a couple others on our Facebook that I think you guys will get a kick out of. Jason says his highlight was he got to meet Weird Al in 1982. Him and his brother were seven and nine years old, and they got a picture with them. That, oh. that must have been awesome. Dude, that's great. F me running. And this one for Matthew. This might be the most random thing I've ever heard. He said, the highlight for me is when I met Ed O'Neill at a signing in 1991 for Married with the Children. He was nice enough to sign a sock I had been wearing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I got to get his signature, but I have nothing to use. What do I got? Use. What do I got? I got a sock. I got a white sock. <laughs> well, you know. That, those are great stories. Those are two of my favorite people, Weird mm -hmm. Al Yankovic and uh, Ed O'Neill from Married with Children. Um, I embarrassed myself a number of years ago, Josh. I got way too drunk at a Dawkin concert, and this version of Dawkin was Don Dawkin, Jeff Pilson, Mick Brown, and Reb Beach. And uh, because of, uh, you know, the position that I hold here at the radio station... <laughs> I was able to uh, meet the band after the show, and I was drunk, and I wanted them to sign something, so I had them sign my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> and they all looked at me as if to say, this is the dumbest thing we've ever done in our career. <laughs> oh, God. I can what? still remember the look. The Reb Beach specifically gave me a look as if he was thinking, that's all you've got, you dork? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got is your stupid, greasy, dirty wallet that we have to... It well, and that's uh, and that that's also uh, that's be intimidating because today's Reb Beach, he's a pirate look. You know, he's not the pretty boy he was back in the '80s and early '90s. He Why looks, does he still have the friggin' pirate look? I don't know. Nobody gets what we're talking about again. Josh and I do an '80s rock. You're knocking. Most of you don't understand or care. But why won't he let go of the friggin' pirate look? <laughs> it's terrible. All right, another uh, another uh, Michael Keaton movie. Yes, from the Brother and Sisterhood. Gung Ho. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled with that one. Oh, I thought it was great. I know you enjoyed gung-ho. Remember when he was cleaning the non-existent windshield? <laughs> <laughs> That's where I learned what a hard-on was. Yes. And we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I wasn't thrilled with gung-ho. My uh, cousin and I saw it in the, at the Boulevard Park in Rear Theater, 99-cent movie theater, mm. first, one of my first jobs. And uh, he was laughing because somebody had said, oh, we're stuck between a rock and a hard-on. 
and I didn't get it. I had no idea. And then he explained to me what a hard-on was and saw the genius behind that line. Yeah. That's a marquee moment in a young kid's life. All right. Here's something to be proud of. Americans. Each and every damn one, uh, last one of us, Americans. Proud, barrel-chested Americans like ourselves. Uh, we cuss more than anyone else on earth. I'm surprised to hear that simply because it seems like, you you know, like uh, the English, yes. they say far worse words and you could say it in front of your grandmother, mm-hmm. yeah. your priest, whatever. Everything is the C word. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was shocked. To the English. But we Americans cuss more than anyone else on planet Earth. Uh, you know, I do wish we could cuss on our radio show. I, I enjoy using foul language. I do. I, I wish we could cuss... Uh, it doesn't bother me. The only time it would be nice is if you have to bleep out something that's only funny because it's a cuss word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or a quote's just not nearly as good. I mean, it just happened the other day. Or I couldn't read the entirety of a T-shirt, and it kind of kills the bit a little bit. And, and speaking of killing the bit, I do wish that we could curse and cuss and say all the foulest words imaginable, imaginable on this radio show. I do. But, Josh, I've heard you say this a number of times. Um... Sometimes on these podcasts now where you can say anything, sometimes it's, it's easy to pick out who's doing it for effect, and that gets annoying after a while. Mm. I, I, I like to believe that if we had the freedom to cuss, that I wouldn't just do it because I can do it and become obnoxious in that way. You, you said you've had those experiences listening to podcasts where you say to yourself, because the host is swearing so much, you say, okay, I get it. You're al- you know what I mean? They, oh, yeah. they yeah, overdo it. You know, or the, it's like, yep. you know, not to pick, pick on any, any particular area, but like satellite radio, especially on a couple of the rock stations, there's a couple dudes you know that just do it because, hey, we're allowed to do yep. this. Right. It, right. But totally. It'd be fine if it was just, you know, a normal conversation. Like, oh, I saw this, dude. It was effing sweet. Like, but it's more like on purpose mm-hmm. where they're trying to show, hey, look, I can say this word. It's almost like they have a bet going to one of their coworkers, see how many times they can drop an F-bomb in yep, in a, in exactly. a four-hour shift. Uh, 715 so, Wild Man, Mild Man, Jesus said, how hard is it? Not to swear on air. It's I, easy. I, it's, yeah, it's mm-hmm. not hard at all. Every once in a while, uh, I'll catch myself almost saying the S word. Um, it's but, very easy. Uh, but, it, but it's not difficult. We've fielded yeah. that question a lot, and it takes you about, I, I, I'd say it takes you about five minutes to get used to yeah. it. Yep. I, five well, minutes, and you're, you're used to it, and, and it doesn't really ever, I mean, maybe once every six months, I have to stop myself from dumping an F-bomb. That's about it. Oh, an F-bomb? Yeah, for me, it's like, it's always S. Like, be like, uh, what time did you go to bed last night? Go, oh, shoot. Maybe it was uh, instead of the other one. Right? Oh, I'm more of an yeah. F-word guy. I'm, you're more of an S-word guy. Yeah. I'm more of an F-word guy. When I've been, uh, like, hanging out at the bar before and have met listeners and talked to them and they hear me, because I, I like to cuss often, they're like, how in the world is that possible that you don't swear on air with how much you cuss, like, it regularly and i always say it kind of just feels like i'm in the room with my grandma mm-hmm. put it this way anyone can do it <laughs> well thank you no, yeah. not that way. Like, <laughs> like you know i would never swear in front of my grandma all of us are capable of cleaning up our language and quickly and I'll, and I'll give you the best example we've had my twin brother on this show a few times who is the absolute world champion of inappropriate language absolutely unrivaled in that department. We've had my brother on this show a few times, and he's never even come close. So it's very easy to clean it up. So more anxiety than hair Jesus said Waffle swore a couple months ago. You did? Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. I, I don't remember that. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah, I remember, yeah, remember that. that. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was that awesome. Was, first but, time ever, right? Yeah, first time ever. And it just what? slipped out, too. It wasn't even like a, a grand. Yeah, it was very bizarre. I missed it. Yeah, what, what word? I think it was the S word. Huh. I think it just slipped out, and then all of a sudden my eyes got huge, and I hit the dump button. It was like within a millisecond, he was like, uh-oh, slap <laughs> jump button. Oh, shoot, I missed it. Yeah. Someone, someone with a hell of a lot of free time analyzed almost 2 million tweets from around the globe. Now, maybe that's easier than I think. I, it sounds like that would, that would take me five years to analyze 2 million tweets, but these computer geeks, they, they can, I'm sure they have some shortcuts. They did this to to find out 
which countries swear the most online. So I guess we're specifically talking about online. It's not even close. The United States whoops everybody's ass in the curse word department. Nearly double. Nearly double. Uh, behind us uh, is, uh, there you go, the uh, friggin' friggin' English. I would have pegged them at number one and us at number two. Definitely. In the third place. <laughs> knowing, knowing very few other countries. Those are, the, that's, those are two <laughs> I could name. Yeah. yeah. In third place, the third foulest country, uh, our neighbors to the north, Australia. Uh, then New Zealand. And then even way over there in Canada. Ooh, down under. They, that's the top five. They even were able to break it down by state here in our great union. I guess the foulest mouth state is Maryland. Hmm. Mara Effin Lind, they call it. South Dakota swears the least. Why do you suppose that is? Because they've always got a a cow hoof in their mouth or something? Why, why? Well, this is online only, so, you know, there's only one Internet computer per town. Oh, they're not online. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I never thought that about that. That makes sense. You're the right. Internet hasn't been hooked up. <laughs> I thought They got 156K modem at the uh, <laughs> down at Town Hall, and that's about it. I assumed that maybe it was because the South Dakotans just always had a... Wisconsin swears quite a bit more than Minnesota. I'm sorry? Wisconsin swears more than Minnesota. Oh, they do? Yeah. That's because they don't have any class at all. <laughs> oh, so does Iowa. So does Nebraska. North Dakota, about the same as Minnesota. Oh, oh so we're not even up there. We're getting uh, we're getting lapped by some of these other Midwestern states. Well, they say, yeah, they don't have any friggin' class. Maryland over doubles us as far as the amount of cuss words. I wonder what's going on over there. I mean, a buddy of mine lived there for a while, and he hated it. Did he really? Yeah, he hated every single second of it. So maybe they're just unhappy people, and when you're unhappy, you curse a lot. I don't know. He said the smell was overwhelming. He says you can't go anywhere in Maryland and not smell. It's like a mix of ass and rotten seafood. No, oh, yuck. Everywhere you go. A buddy of mine, he's there right now, and he got, like, food poisoning from some seafood. Ugh. Yeah. Doesn't Boston smell like that, too? Boston smells like armpits and crack rocks. <laughs> It's a solid 50-50 mix, Wapple. <laughs> Old deodorantless Yuck. armpits Ew. and crack rocks roasting over a open fire of dog turds. Oh, it just burns <laughs> your oh, nose. Just horrible. Oh. Uh, horrible. We got to take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, just minutes away now from a, a merciful end to today's broadcast. We were talking about swearing on the radio. Someone texted in, is it difficult to not swear? On, how, how do you not... It's not difficult. It's very easy to keep your language clean on the friggin' radio. Uh, right there, I can say friggin' instead of the real word, and uh, it's frustrating, but it works. Uh, another listener or two are asking, how come you can say ass and bitch, but you can't say shh? Uh, hell, I don't know. I just work here. Mm -hmm. I, I got I to gotta admit, I really don't fully know the rules. They've changed quite a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's, there's things we used to not be able to say that you can and vice versa. It's, it's confusing at times. Many times. Um... Josh will turn to me and say, can I say this? Or I'll ask you. Yeah. Uh, but whenever you ask me, I have to simply say, I don't really know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'd have a sheet printed out for us or something? I think it changes. I mean, yeah. remember, Nick, they used to tell us, you know, what we want you to do oh. is race up to the line. But don't <laughs> cross it. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, we don't know where that line is, and the line changes. Uh -huh. But race right up to that. But just know if you cross it, you're going to get in trouble. That's exactly what we were told. That was one of the most ridiculous conversations I've ever been part of. Josh and I in the boss's office one day, and he said exactly that. We want you to bring your material to that line. We don't know what the line is. This is the boss speaking. We don't know what the line is, but we want you there. But if you cross it, you're in big trouble. Okie dokie, chief. We'll see you tomorrow. What a moron. So we were asked, as you mentioned, Nick, how hard is it not to swear on the air? And I think we've answered that question. Oh, geez, Jesus said, now how hard is it to be funny on air? Because it sounds like it's the most difficult thing for y'all. My Dang. God. Dang. Oh, Dang. Coming for our next. Oh, bitch. Uh, uh, right at a, the end of the show? <laughs> he's a funny yet hurtful guy. <laughs> All right. Now, speaking of wonderful, dirty talk and foul words. 
Um, here's what I have in front of me now. Uh, when we're talking around young ears, we need to be mindful when we're talking about or asking for adult playtime, if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure, I think uh, any couple with kids has that code. People online, do you? Do you have that code with your wife when you want to have sex with her? Yeah, yeah, we used Nine to. Nine times out of ten, she wants to have sex with you. It used to be that way. That has changed as well. When you are going to fold her smooth in half uh, and the kids are around, you have a code word for it? We used to, yeah. We had a couple. Oh, no. Uh, one was, hey, you want to go watch Criminal Minds? Oh, oh, yeah. I remember you telling us about that yeah. one. Yep. And then the other one, uh, when I was uh, you know, really into lifting... Um, and going to the gym and stuff, we'd uh, say, hey, you want to go work arms? All That's right. the other. So those were the two <laughs> codes we had. Okay. Uh, this online conversation in front of me, uh, people are sharing their favorite family-friendly phrases for getting at the F on. If the kids are around, you got to dump the code word, I guess. Um, family-friendly phrases for getting it. On. There are only two that are even mildly amusing, if you ask me. And I'm just going to give you those two. The rest are really stupid. But there's two that I did get a kick out of. One is moving furniture. That's clever. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Hell that's yeah. Good. That is good. And the, the other, also, full credit on this one. Something you say in front of the kids when you and the wife want to bump Uggs. Let's go listen to some prints. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I remember the first time I heard a man refer to his bed, married man, the first time I heard a married man refer to his bed as the workbench. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I, we worked with a guy who called his bedroom the arena. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. And, and, of course, the bed would be the stage. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. That's fun. That was pretty good. That's one way to do it, Cubby. I enjoy it. Uh, happy birthday to Marv. The 93X FS Morning Show. 93. 93. The 93X Half Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. It is savings on a stick season with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning's State Fair Specials. Deals on deals on deals that can save you thousands. Visit standardheating.com for all their state fair deals. Standard Heating, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930.